लाइव And good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Today we have a very special one-wheeler uh, rider from USA. He's a fantastic rider and uh, is on one of the guys who can teach us lots because he has uh, a very a big experience in the world of one wheel, and he's going to show you us some. Uh, things i see with him today he has a video for us that we're going to talk later stay there and i just want to say thank you for coming hello curry how are you my friend well hello Nelson. thank you for having me today uh it's good to be here good very yeah. good that is fantastic for me to have you uh like always i start i want to know how do you find uh, this electro sport for the first time do you have a it's background a you have a background before a uh, one wheel or you started direct with a one wheel so there's you know i started as a kid uh you know as a very young child uh, my father actually gave me a three-wheeler now a lot of people uh around the world know what these are some don't but what for those who don't know what this is i'll explain the three-wheeler was a motorized uh bike uh, with large tires and there were three configured two in the rear and one in the front um, they were really a very cool device uh, but they were dangerous uh, to the point that the u.s government uh, made a deal with the manufacturers in china uh, honda primarily uh, to no longer import the devices they wouldn't outright ban them uh, but in fact they would stop importation so that was my early life uh, experience with motorsport and odd numbers of wheels. Uh, it seems that it theme has continued. I now have gone from three to one. So <laughs> looking forward to that, looking forward to that final reduction to zero wheels. Uh, you know, I do definitely want to go ahead and get to that full hoverboard stage. That'd be great. Uh, I'm hoping the engineers hurry up and get this done for me. <laughs> um, but with that being said, uh, you know, I, I then uh, later in life, uh, you know, I, as a kid, I did some skiing. It was never really much for skiing, to be perfectly honest about it. Uh, the stance just was not my thing. I think it's the same reason I'm not an EUC guy. I've tried mm -hmm. them. I think they're the coolest things in the world, but the stance just does not work for me. So I, I actually later on, you know, snowboarding was invented. Um, I'm kind of an old guy, not super old, mm -hmm. right? but old enough that I existed before snowboarding existed, right? So, um, you know, then snowboarding became a thing. And of course, you know, uh, I would, I lived in the uh, Colorado, uh, New Mexico border area. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of mountains, beautiful Rocky mountains, uh, every winter, lots of snow. And of course, uh, you know, I would go out every year and, you know, get a little bit of action on the mountains, either it'd be just hiking and, you know, going and looking around, or of course, obviously snowboarding was really fun, super awesome to do. Never was a big fan of all the you know, lines and having to go to the resort and dealing with the people and the lift tickets. And it's just, it's a bunch of things, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 a, it's a headache to go. So with that being said, I enjoyed it. A lot of fun. But it was just something that I couldn't make a part of my, you know, everyday life because it takes real effort. I'm a busy guy. I've always been a busy guy. Uh, I, I don't have the time to, you know, take off to the mountains and go spend, uh, you know, a week every, you know, a uh, couple of months to go play. It would be wonderful if I did, but I can <laughs> spare a day sometimes and I have to use that day wisely. <clears throat> and the day, unfortunately, just isn't enough to really go to a resort most of the time and have a good time. <laughs> so this for me is why the one wheel is obviously so perfect because I, I grab my board, and I go out the front door here and uh, you know, I'm writing and I'm having a good time within minutes. And not only that, obviously, I'm getting things done that I need to be getting mm -hmm. done while I'm not having a ride. So, uh, yeah, that's that's why I ended up getting into one wheels because it just made so much sense. Yeah, I think too. Uh, I'm I'm going to, I, I'm going to I'm going to start from from the end. I, I, before I we go, I just want to say, uh, uh, if it was not a one wheel, this year don't uh, was not going to happen. 
Uh, this is very nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, 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 can you tell us a little more about this, please? Sure. So my girlfriend Anna and I had just left the brewery and we'd uh, gotten to the road that you see in the video there. Up ahead, just a couple of blocks ahead, about two and a half blocks, I hear a loud bang. And of course, that was that car that you see right there hitting the sign. Mm -hmm. And of course, at the time, I didn't know, but he had ran over a pedestrian as well. A uh, father in front of his daughter and his wife, they'd just gotten back from dinner. And he'd driven over top of them. Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, I obviously arrived on the scene uh, just a couple seconds after I told my girlfriend, you know, please call 911 get the emergency mm -hmm. services started to come help. Uh, and of course I, you know, got on the board and I wanted to go see, you know, can I render aid? Can I do something to help? You know, obviously, cause I heard somebody screaming, very, very loud screaming. Well, at that time I saw the car take off and I saw there were people helping. So my thought was the best thing I can do is to, you know, try to follow the car. At the least I can get a license plate. Uh, if, if not, you know, just a license plate, then maybe, you know, maybe I can do something more, but I wanted to at least get a license plate of the vehicle. So I, to, I, I, go ahead. I just want, I just want to stop here for everybody to understand. Look here, do you see the person? I'm going to leave the video here because uh, uh, he, 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 he gave me the link and I'm going to put for everybody to see it. And I'm going to share in the media tomorrow from all my medias because I think that is shocking to see what happened to this. Look at this, he passed it with his car. And how can you leave a person like this and run away? That is not normal. Well, and it, it's even worse because you see the windshield is broken. He hit mm -hmm. this man, the man flew, then he ran him over. It was two impacts, it was not just one. He hit him twice. Hello, Igna. Hi, Ignaz. How are you, sir? <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> uh, and uh, when, you don't take two times. You just go no, after him. Not. I mean, so, and then, and of course, uh, I... What I, you I do? <laughs> yeah, this is, I guess, we're a little forward in the video here. But uh, yeah. so what happened was I, I, go, I, I, I you know, I, I, I went I ahead and I, you know, did chase him down this road here after I got behind him. And, you know, as we came up to the stoplight, which was, oh, about two and a half blocks, three blocks ahead of where we are right now. Yeah, I guess it's about, no, actually, I guess it's about three and a half, four blocks ahead of where we are in this video. And so, here comes you. And then here comes me, right? And so I, you know, I went ahead and just followed the car. Um, we get up to the stoplight up there and I got the license plate of the vehicle. And yes, I am. Thank you very much, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, but I'm a nerd who can spell. Oh. Anyways, uh, <laughs> dude, anyway, uh, yeah, so I get up to the light, uh, and, you know, the guy sees me, and he decides to take off. You know, he's not going to wait around for me to, you know, say hi and introduce myself here. Um, so the guy takes off, and, you know, he uh, takes a right and heads uh, east on uh, what is it it's got to be 29th street yes yeah, so it's 29th street at this point he takes an eat right goes east and he you know nails it he floors it he's definitely getting out of here now granted the car is leaking every fluid imaginable uh, as he had ran over the gentleman uh, you can see the trail right here in this video i mean it was oil and antifreeze and transmission fluid and essentially every fluid the car had in it i, I think he may have yeah. missed the power steering fluid i'm not certain yeah. if he missed the power steering fluid uh, pretty sure he got the brake lines. I mean, literally everything was leaking out of this vehicle. Um, really impressive amount of damage to the car. So he gets up to the next light. And of course, I'm able to follow the trail. I mean, he's, you know, he's literally leaving a breadcrumb of, uh, you know, oil and antifreeze and every fluid in the vehicle as he goes forward. Uh, get up to the light and he, just where the car stopped in this picture there. And I basically tell him, you know, I, I beat on the window. I'm like, look, get out of the car, get out, shut off the car, get out now. He looks over to the left, sees me, and you know, at that point he looks back forward and I can tell he's looking for a way out because he's caught in traffic. You know, there's traffic. Mm -hmm. And Sean, mm -hmm. this gentleman right here that you see, uh, Sean Alarcon, um, he had basically left his shop open. So he owns a uh, smoke shop in uh, mm -hmm. Wynwood. And this mm -hmm. happened right in front of his shop. He left his door open, no employee. He just told the bystanders, please watch the shop. Goes around back, jumps in his car, and uh, goes to chase this guy down. 
Um, so he's a, he, you know, this guy right here that you're seeing on the uh, TV there was right by my side as this is going down. So he comes up, um, and of course he comes past me as I'm chasing this guy down 29th street, just as we come over top of the railroad tracks, Sean passes me. And of course I know, you know, this car is, he's getting after it. Right. And I'm like, okay, this guy's with me. He's going to help. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm waiting. I'm like there, you know, he's right in front of, he's right in front of us. This guy pulls up in the traffic and he actually ends up stopping right next to this vehicle. So, you know, I pull up in front and I, you know, I see the license plate. I, you know, come around the front to verify, yes, this is the car. It's obviously got a human sized mm -hmm. hole in the windshield. Uh, so I, you know, I come up to the front of the vehicle uh, and I, you know, look through the windshield, obviously seeing it's broken, seeing the driver. And that's, you know, I, when I go up to the side of the vehicle and I start, you know, uh, kind of beating on the window. Uh, saying to the guy, you know, hey, you know, get out of the vehicle, shut it off, it's over, get out, man, get out, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he looks, you know, to the right, he looks forward, he looks back at me, and he looks forward again. It's pretty obvious to me. He's getting ready to go. He's going to go through the cars. He's going to go. He's he's just going to go. He has no intention of stopping. So at that mm -hmm. point, I pick up my one wheel. Now, a, a lot of the people who are watching probably have ridden a one wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, but with that being said, for those of you who haven't, they weigh 25 to 30 plus pounds. Uh, and they're a really, really solid device. These are not made out of plastic. They're made out of metal and wood. Uh, it's truly a really solid, solid thing. So I pick it up and I literally just smash the window out with it. Um, you know, and I, for the few of you who've ever, you know, had occasion to pop out a uh, window in a car, uh, there's probably not, you know, many of you who've done that for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to adjust the window here. Sorry for the weird eye movement, but I'm trying to, oh, uh, everything is not moving well. Okay, let's see. There we go. So anyways, um, as I get up to uh, the window, you know, and pop it out, uh, you know, I drop the board over there right to my bottom side uh, to the left. And I, I take my arm, go inside of the window. And uh, I, I'm leaning my arm up against the guy's throat, kind of pinning him against the seat. Uh, and I reach in with my left arm through the now broken window and I shut the vehicle off. I reach for the keys and turn it off while I'm choking him with my right arm. Um, and at that time, I you know, switched arms real quickly and I grabbed a hold of him by the throat with the hand. Uh, and I reach over, put the car in park. Uh, and then I reached back at the same time. Uh, and I just basically unlatched the door from the inside. I unlocked and unlatched mm -hmm. the door at the same time, uh, opened the door. And of course, at that point, I had to let go of him. So I just let go of him with his hand, open the door, come in, grab a hold of him again, unbuckle the seatbelt. The guy was wearing a seatbelt. Hey, let's be safe while we're running people over. Right? <laughs> Good deal. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, I unbuckle the seatbelt and I you know, ripped this guy out of the car. Uh, and, you know, I, I do mean I ripped him out of the car. I think he was a little surprised. Um, so anyway, get him out of the car. And I, I just basically dragged this guy bodily across a couple lanes of traffic and over to the sidewalk. And Sean Alarcone is there, uh, the guy that you saw. He meets me. And I said, you know, hey, help me get this guy down. I don't want to hurt him. You know, uh, mm -hmm. obviously, he's, he's obviously an asshole, but there's no reason to do damage. So mm -hmm. get him down to the ground with Sean's help because he's fighting. And I just sit on top of him. Uh, the blood you see on the shorts there is actually mine from the broken window, not him. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. These are my these are my knees in the photo, and I'm actually mm -hmm. taking the photo. I wanted to make sure that in case he somehow pulled he a knife on me, stabbed me or something, you know, and runs, I've still got a photo of the asshole. Um, mm -hmm. So anyways, I uh, do this and couldn't have been more than about 30 seconds later. Uh, Miami police officer, actually multiple Miami police officers, uh, start rounding the corner, uh, heading for the scene. Uh, but the pedestrians wave them down and they get over there. It was uh, pretty rapid, actually. The response time on this was could not have been more than a minute and a half to two minutes. Pretty That's impressive. Good. Pretty yeah. impressive. And uh, how is the day the person uh, was... So I, I have not you spoken to him. with him. Yes, I, I still am in contact with him. I haven't spoken to him in about six months. Uh, maybe, no, I guess it's been a year. He, mm -hmm. um, we, we have plans to go get dinner. I intend to take him and his family out. Uh, we did a little fundraising for him. We did a GoFundMe with the One Wheel community. The uh, One Wheel community and some of my friends were very generous. Uh, I think we managed to raise, uh, overall with his uh, fundraiser, it was like $5,000. And the one wheel community was responsible for a pretty good portion of that. So that felt really good. Um, and, uh, 
it, it, it really is. You know, the one wheel community is a wonderful community of great people. Uh, and they do a great job of, you know, taking care of not only their own, uh, but also a very civic minded group. Uh, whenever yeah. the time is right to take care of somebody outside of the group, they're generally very good about doing it. So that's really wonderful. I think too. One wheel is a danger <laughs> video. Uh, uh, and if it ends, the, the video is sent uh, to you. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, as everybody knows, uh, I guess this is, this is actually kind of a fun segue, right? So, you know, whenever I was chasing the guy, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, hey, don't nosedive, don't nosedive. Because obviously you get, you know, a little excited on the one wheel and you're, you know, chasing me down and all of this is obviously in our vehicle. Um, for the very few of you who don't know, the one wheel, if you accelerate too quickly, uh, the board cannot keep up and uh, it will just basically toss you if you're not expecting Dis it. It's going to disconnect. Right. It, and it really doesn't even disconnect. Um, that's kind of a common misconception. It's mm -hmm. not really so much a disconnection. Uh, it's just that it runs out of power. So the board only keeps the nose in the air with power. Um, mm -hmm. And if you run out of power, it doesn't disconnect. It's still pulling as hard as it can. It's just not enough to keep the nose in the air. And he um, said to you, and that's why the, that's the, there is the pushback. pushback. Right, exactly. And of course, pushback, you know, you can easily overcome it. Um, <laughs> some people think that some people think that pushback is going to stop you from accelerating. It most certainly doesn't. Uh, there, if you, you have my YouTube channel, you can find a video on there of me, uh, just a you know, normal Miami cruise. Uh, and you pull it up, and I mean, my average speed is 20 mile an hour. Um, I've got yeah. the app open as well as the video. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's really easy on these things to just, you know, hit 20 mile an hour and stay there with practice. Um, you know, I'm now I sitting in like something it. like 30, yeah, just a little over 30,000 miles of riding. Um, and unfortunately, I've been uh, either too busy or too injured. <laughs> I broke my toe recently. I'm not pleased about that. Got to be doing Going to be doing the first ride this Friday in like a month. But between being busy and everything else, I haven't racked up very many miles in the last year. Um, you know, it's been really hard to uh, continue to rack up the miles with all the work I'm doing with the companies. Uh, but with that being said, uh, I still get out when I can. So in the last year, I may have made, you know, 2,000, 3,000 miles. I don't know. It may be that low. It, it No higher than 5,000, though, um, which for a year for me, that's a pretty small year. That so, is very small. Yeah. For and you, so my what friend, I, you... what do I think about the voice of one wheel stopping, huh? Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I miss Adam, you know, with his silliness and everything else. It's a great show. Um, you know, I think uh, the idea for them to pivot, I don't know that it's really disappearing so much as they're pivoting to a less frequent show. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that that may be a better format for them. Um, it, you know, as long as it fits for Adam and, uh, you know, we continue to see some belly every now and again. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm pretty good with it. Uh, so, you know, I, I really would like to, uh, you know, see them come back with some cool content and, uh, the Looch dog is something we need more of in our life. No doubt about that. Uh, I know he's busy DJing weddings out there, but, uh, with that being said, uh, Adam's a fun guy, you know, you could have him on someday. He's, uh, <laughs> if you, you know, he's, uh, he's really, he's a fun guy. So. I just want to say hello to everybody is coming. Uh, Cody, uh, Ignar, uh, Derek, uh, uh, Vince. Uh, How are you? We have lots have of guys lots from guys different from countries. Different you have Vincent is from Holland. You have uh, Ignar from Germany. Kobe, Kobe, uh, Kobe is uh, is from uh, USA. Then you have Derek and uh, everybody's coming now we're starting the live if you have questions leave the question there then we're going to try to answer for all of you guys uh and then we have here like uh, um the first board that you the, the first one wheel that you buy what what which one so my first board was actually the one wheel plus uh i kickstarted it in the first 24 hours uh, you actually, my first helmet, uh, the one you see right there in the mm -hmm. uh, video, wherever it was, uh, it was actually, it has the Pioneer patch on it. So um, if you ordered in the first 24 hours of the uh, Kickstarter, uh, you got this really cool patch that they gave out. Uh, and you were, you know, obviously supposed to get the one wheel a little quicker. <clears throat> Don't know that that worked out quite that way. Uh, I think I ended up waiting. 
gosh, it was, it seemed like forever, you know, you ordered it and then it was, you know, of course they'd already done a Kickstarter. So we knew they were going to deliver the board. Didn't really get nervous. It was just very, uh, you know, had to wait forever, it seemed. But, uh, you know, I'd seen it on, you know, the Kickstarter and I'd seen the V1, you know, I, I had never actually seen one in person, but I knew these things existed and they seemed like a really great idea. Uh, you know, obviously having never seen one, having never ridden one, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to ride one. Uh, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's always one of those things that, you know, as a 35 year old guy at the time, uh, this five years ago, right? Um, you know, I, I was like, I don't know if I can do this or not. I'm not sure, <laughs> but what the heck, let's try it, right? Well, so, uh, or was it four years ago? Whatever, how long it was. It seems like forever now. Yeah. Um, that was a different life ago. Uh, one, wheel, one wheel is a whole different life, that's for sure, right? It's changed my world. Uh, um, <clears throat> so with that being said, uh, you know, I uh, actually bought the thing. I uh, was very excited. Tried to, you know, find content on YouTube and Facebook. And, you know, basically there was uh, a pretty, you know, big lack of information. Um, there was just a little bit of stuff out there, a little bit of content. Uh, but with that being said, uh, it was, you know, really hard to find anything out there for, you know, real advice. Certainly no real maker community out there. At that point, it was only really um, <clears throat> pretty much Jeff McCosker uh, and a couple of other small guys out there doing, uh, you know, mods for them. Obviously, that market has grown a great deal. Uh, but with that being said, you know, there just wasn't many options out there. You had Jeff's really super cool, colorful float plates. Uh, you get those and you know that was that was pretty much the only accessory out there for the one wheel other than Greg DeGenti's silver handle that came out pretty shortly. I don't know that I was aware of anything else out there for a good long while. Um, you know after that uh, then of course uh, the rail guard started to come out and we uh, all started swapping our tires like it was you know our job and uh, <laughs> eventually that did become my job which is an interesting Side note, we'll probably get into here. Uh, but, uh, you know, with that being said, uh, it was one of those things where the board, when we started writing, it was, you know, it was a, it was basically not a lot of options, not a lot of information. It was just the board and you bought it and you wrote it. You, you know, we didn't never see each other out in the wild. You'd never see another one wheeler. It was pretty rare. Uh, then we started using Facebook to meet up. Now, Vito Compuzano started the mm -hmm. uh, South Porto group before I was here. Uh, eventually ended up meeting up with them uh, and uh, taking some group rides. Uh, there's plenty of fun stories around all of that, of course, but uh, that may be a whole other show in and of itself. Anyway, um, so, you know, it ended up uh, not just being a board, but being a community. And, uh, you know, my best buddy now in Miami, Lucas Pawlowski, great guy. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, and frankly, I would have never met him without one wheel. So, uh, you know, it's, it's truly, ironically, uh, this thing that I bought is, you know, Hey, maybe this is a, you know, bad $2,000 decision, but I'm going to try it anyway. Uh, it's, it's truly transformed, uh, my, you know, friend circle. It's transformed my life. Uh, it, you know, cures any depression you may have any bad day you may have. Uh, you know, if you uh, want to just go literally punch holes in walls, you can do that. Or you can grab a one wheel and go for a ride. Uh, you know, totally up to you, but either one works well. Uh, but you know. but do, you, do you, as you imagine that that the, the one wheel is going to be so big like it is today? No, of course not. Um, I mean, when I first started writing this thing, uh, I... It was, it was kind of the most amazing thing in the world, right? Because you would be out riding and people would literally like yell at you like, oh my God, what is that? That's amazing. Oh my God. Uh. <laughs> you know, it was, it was, it was, it was crazy. You know? It was like, you felt like almost like a celebrity riding a stupid thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and, you're, and you're like, this is, this is stupid. This is so silly, but it's fun, you know? And of course, you know, you can see the speaker there on top. This is early days, by the way. By the, in the video you're watching here, this is me doing mm -hmm. some testing on some prototype fangs and stuff. Just, uh -huh. uh, Doing quick little hill climbs. These were like the very first sets of things that Matt yeah. the 3D yeah. did. Uh, but so anyway, um, you know, we went out and we started to make friends. Uh, oh, Derek's going back to work. Bye, Derek. Bye, <laughs> Derek. You, buddy. Have a good time, my friend. 
Enjoy it. Uh, speaking, of, speaking of friends, that's a good friend right there. Derek's an awesome guy. That is, um, that is what is good for me in this. Is like you have so many friends. Yeah, it's that's exactly what it is, truly. And and you know, here's speaking of friends. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go squirrel here and ADHD off on subjects because why not? It's fun. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, friends. We all, you know, we use that word in different ways, in different times, mm -hmm. in different groups, and so on. But, you know, during Float Life Fest uh, 3, and of course 2 as well, but during 3 particularly, it kind of, you know, hit me that um, it's a truly an exceptional group of people. Uh, you know, there were multiple people at that time that, you know, just left boards laying everywhere. You get up in the morning, there's literally one wheel scattered everywhere. Uh, nobody would even think about stealing somebody else's board. It would not even cross their mind you know it's just not it's not something they do um you know i mean it was pretty remarkable in fact uh ryan hurowitz so this is at float life fest three mm -hmm. and if you don't know the name ryan hurowitz this guy is you know a character and a half um mm -hmm. really great guy in a lot of ways makes a lot of people angry of course like i said character and a half <laughs> characters always do that but uh you know he's uh he's a fun guy and so we're at Float Life Fest 3, and he's, you know, got, you know, all these spare parts for boards, and he has this motor uh, that is just completely garbage and a couple of empty housings. Uh, and so what he does is he actually takes and takes this whole damn thing, puts together a board out of junk, and throws it in the creek. There's this wonderful river, like small river, running through the property where we are. <laughs> and he literally throws this thing, just throws this thing in the middle of the water. And so for the next two days... I can't tell you how many people got pranked with this, like, oh my God, it's a one wheel. And they would go run and jump in the water <laughs> and go save the one wheel for other people. So like literally it was one of the things that like people would see a one wheel in the water and they would be like, I'm gonna save somebody's board. Oh my God, I can't leave that. It, it's, and it was, I mean, it was, it was an obvious testament to how wonderful all these people are that they would be willing to go immediately jump in the water. And it's also a testament to what a dirty prankster Ryan is, but God love the man, it was beautiful. Um, <laughs> It was it was the best. It truly really was. It was one of the funniest pranks. Uh, I just, think that so is many, fantastic. That is fantastic. So funny. You know, there was just so many people that went, you know, they'd run, they'd jump in the water. Uh, they're trying to, you know, pick the one wheel out. And of course, <laughs> then we're all dying. We're Because about, you know, 90% of the people are in on this already. So mm -hmm. they look over to the shore and everybody's just literally on the ground, you know, dying, laughing. It's, you know, so they're like, what? And we're like, it's, yeah, Ryan. So. <laughs> this is crazy. I imagine I imagine I imagine the face for everybody trying to oh, pick it. <laughs> it was good. It was so good. You know, that was that was definitely one of those things. That, uh, <laughs> that is Yok. Hello, Yok. Yok was with oh. you. One one of the three guys who was in, uh, in the three Germans, right? Yes. The three yes, Germans yes, exactly. was with you. I, I remember him well. You, Ignace. That you take the picture. That you take the picture yeah. of the two of them. And I and at this point in time, I think I'd had about fifteen to twenty beers, so I managed to get their feet <laughs> off. It was uh, still. I'm still a little embarrassed about that every time that thing gets posted. But it's a great shot of them, so I don't mind. Just wish I got their feet in the thing. So. But you make fantastic pictures all the time, my friend. Thank you. Don't Thank you. you. That, don't one, you that ever... one may be one of my not the best. I just wish I'd done a better job of it. So. But but uh, uh, one 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 question, my friend is. Uh, do you uh, do you damage a lot of cameras during this time? No, uh, in all honesty. So I tend to shoot with the Canon One series, uh, the One D, One DX, and mm -hmm. uh, you know whichever version it may be. Um, great cameras, and frankly, uh, you can take a tumble off the board with it, uh, and the camera is likely to be the thing that damages you. Uh, more than you damaging the camera. Now, of course, the larger lenses, you could smash the lens hood or, you know, elements, but uh, generally they're they're pretty tough. Uh, okay. I could, I could actually go get a lens out of my uh, collection that it looks like it's been through a war zone. Uh, it's missing half the paint. Uh, the front element, uh, the, the metal is all bent in around it where it's been hit against things. Um, you know, it's, it's really, and I don't mean bent a little either. I mean, like, this mm -hmm. thing looks bad. Uh, but the truth of it is, is that they're built to take the abuse. These are professional grade cameras. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the camera will take the abuse. So, uh, I, I've because actually I never, I've never really wrecked that hard. And you see me riding with it, right? But yeah, I've never yeah really that's it. why, 
That's I've why I see, you ride it. I see you ride it and I see you doing lots of pictures, lots of uh, videos. And sometimes I say, ooh, because I have my cameras here. And sometimes I'm so careful and I say, oh, that is too much money to... <laughs> Yeah, you know I, I, guess I, mean. I, ride around, I guess I ride around pretty regularly with about fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars worth of camera in my hand, right? Yeah. Um, it's uh, yeah, I bought it to use it. I bought it to use it, man. Um, mm -hmm. I, I did not buy it so it could sit safely at home. Yeah. Uh, I bought the stuff so I could get out there and use it. And if something happens, uh, you know, we'll figure it out. So not oh, a big deal. Uh, I know. I I have my like my I have this three hundred sixty the Insta uh, and I yeah. is the second one I broke it and uh, I have two here with the uh, glasses uh, complete damage. Yeah, it's it's really easy, unfortunately, to you know wreck and break the cameras. Uh, I've taken out a GoPro gimbal and a GoPro uh, definitely <laughs> more than once. I rebuilt the gimbal like three times and continue to break it. <laughs> um, but it's it's you know a matter of how hard you're sending, right? So whenever yeah. I've got a bigger camera rig in my hands, I uh, I throttle back to a more sane level. Uh, if it's just a cheap GoPro and a gimbal, send it. <laughs> just <laughs> my friend, I just want to show uh, to everyone. That is a fantastic picture. Uh, tell Good us place. a little more about this. So this is a really because wonderful you place. See, because you see the, the face of Chris. <laughs> Chris is right. Like, yeah, Chris is Chris is so serious there, and he's he's double backpacking it too. By the way, you'll notice he's wearing two backpacks. Mm -hmm. He was so kind as to carry the beer. So there's there's one backpack with beer, and uh, he was very 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 appreciated. Thank you, Chris. Uh, so uh, yeah, he's he's packing heavy here. Um, but yes, what we have to do here. So this is this is whenever NASA uh, was testing for the moon shot. So whenever they were going to send man to the moon, uh, <laughs> they were deciding between different rocket technologies. And the one that was down selected eventually, of course, uh, was the you know liquid fuel booster that we know today so well for the shuttle program. Uh, or not the shuttle program, rather the Apollo program and all the other stuff anyways. So when we actually look back though there was another alternative program uh it was run by aerojet general tire of all people and nasa and they were looking for a solid fuel rocket booster uh, that may have been a better fit for the project and effectively what they decided was that they were going to build a facility to test these in the everglades now if you look and see where this picture is taken we're about two and a half to three miles from where the land truly ends. Mm -hmm. uh, this is down past Homestead, uh, heading towards the Everglades National Park. If you ever want to find it, look for Frog Pond WMA. Mm -hmm. Well, you take a road here. Now, this road is blocked off. It's no access to uh, you know anything but uh, mm -hmm. either vehicles like this or walkers or bikes. No cars. And you go down this road seven miles. Uh, it's, you know, 15 kilometers, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and you go in, and what you find is they've cut the road in three places. There are three places Ooh. they have just cut the road away. You see the road in the background here. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason they did this is because, you know, they just want to keep vehicles out of where the rocket is. There's mm -hmm. still a very big rocket booster in the ground. Uh, still to this day, the three, they built three. The two first tests went pretty good. Uh, the third test did not go so good. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually failed about halfway through and coated about 100 square miles in hydrochloric acid. Uh, the farmers were a little angry. So uh, anyway, um, because they, they were firing, they were firing it, they were firing it into the earth. So the, the ball of flame. In, you're putting in a nice way that the farmers was not. <laughs> not they were not happy about this, right? So, um, so you know, they they would take the rocket though, and they would be shooting it into the earth to measure it. They didn't want to launch it so much as they wanted to mm -hmm. measure it, right? So, they were you know pushing down into the earth with the rocket. <clears throat> Obviously, whenever it goes wrong, this means that everything sprays like a giant you know uh, lawn sprinkler. Uh, it's not so good, and it did mm -hmm. some damage. But so they decided to end testing at that point, <laughs> and NASA down selected for the uh, technology, which of course went forward. Uh, in the meantime, this site languished. Uh, it's a 260-inch bore solid fuel rocket booster that still sits in the ground there. 
they've covered it with concrete and all kinds of things, but you can still crawl in and get a good look at it if you want to. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to ride down there, and then you have three cuts through the road. So they've cut it out in three places, and you have to take the board and you know go across the cuts. Uh, you know, hold it up above your head and take a good little wade. Of course, in the bottom of them, they're full of little sharp rocks that feel terrible. So you have to bring you know good water shoes as well for this. So if you're going to do it, bring your water shoes. Uh, but you know, it's actually it's really kind of a fun uh, little place. In fact, if you look at my YouTube channel, you'll find a helicopter taking off. Uh, and this is actually at the same site. So the uh, Miami-Dade Sheriff goes out there and uses the site for 180-degree live fire training. Uh, so they'll... Oh, this one. Can, yeah, exactly. So and you can jump to about three-quarter of the way through it here. Um, but uh, yeah, they, uh, they actually gave us a pretty good little buzz here. Very cool guys. Very, very cool guys. Uh, you know, it turns out, and I, I just want to be very clear here, rotor wash uh, on a one wheel is a real bitch to deal with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this guy, uh, it was super fun, uh, like actually riding through the rotor. It, it almost took me off. It was super fun. Yeah. Really it. it felt very so close. Cool. Very close. So here, I watched the, uh, yeah, this is great. Wow. Hey, you, you, you feel it. You feel it. Oh, you felt it, yeah. And so right here, they give a little siren for the kid, uh, and uh, it was fun, you know, really good time. That was uh, Lance and Chris Perea with us there. And, uh, oh, but that nice. is the good thing. That is something for you to remember, and that yes. is what makes fun with the one wheel. You go to roads that uh, nobody goes. Yes, exactly. So uh, we, go to, we go places nobody can go. Uh, you know, I mean, unless you're incredibly dedicated, uh, you know, we take we take what would otherwise be a real adventure and a real workout to get to places. Mm-hmm. We make it a lot of fun. Um, you know, we we go explore entire areas of the city. We go and explore, you know, areas off road and we find new trails and we, you know, we go to look at things that really, quite frankly, you would never find any other way. Speaking of, here's a fun story. Uh, I don't think I shared this with you. I didn't. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so my yeah. friends in Miami and uh, I suppose some of the other ones in the larger one wheel community know uh, that I've been playing a game with some of my friends and uh, other people as well, but uh, burying silver around the city, actual physical silver coins. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, it's, and it's actually, it's under Treasure Hunt Miami. Uh, no, Treasure Hunt South Florida. Sorry, Treasure Hunt South Florida uh, on Facebook. And mm-hmm. uh, anyways, there's currently right now, we've got uh, five coins up for grabs hidden in a very beautiful place. Uh, so it's buried just about a foot under the dirt and there's a, a very clear marker showing the way. Uh, it's a nice patch. It's the uh, red skull patch that I like to wear. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can see it. You can see it on my uh, head right there in the image over, uh, on the profile yeah. Uh, yeah. drawing. But so I, I actually glue that, uh, over top of it on a tree and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's there for somebody to find. Uh, there's four coins inside and a note. Uh, with my contact info and all they have to do is contact me and they'll get the fifth one so that's five yeah, ounces that's of silver that's for anybody who uh you know solves the riddle and finds the thing <laughs> everything is there guys <laughs> <laughs> so just fun you know i mean it's uh it's a it's fun way to uh, right you know it's a good way to encourage people to go out and have a good time and you know go explore around and find new parts of the city and maybe they'll find some silver maybe they won't uh, but there's already been one that I gave away that was found pretty quickly. I made this one a little bit more challenging. I think I, I dropped one new clue at the beginning of the year. I guess I need to drop another clue here in about a month, something like that. So. <laughs> that is a very good thing. Oh, but you are, you are a bad boy. <laughs> yes. You know, I, I like to have fun. You know? it's, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm sure I broke several laws burying that there, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> tell, me, uh, tell me a little more about this, my friend. That is a fantastic, that is a fantastic thing. thing. So, here we have Jamie T uh, over there on the far left. We got Lucas Pawlowski, David, uh, and then we've got uh, Chris over there on the oh, far sorry. right. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. So, what we've got there, though, is we actually that day <clears throat> was the first group tire change we ever did. Uh, and we did it over at Jamie's house. Uh, it was really super fun. Uh, because what we actually ended up doing was getting all the guys together uh, and actually swapping out, like, I don't know, I don't know how many tires it was. It was like five tires, though, six tires there really quickly. We all swapped out. Um, yeah, somewhere in there. 
And there we go. That's it. So yeah, we swapped out. I guess it's I guess we just did four tires that day or five tires that day. Mm-hmm. Um and so it was just it was super cool and super fun though. <clears throat> because you know, we uh we obviously hadn't done it a lot before, and I had done it like once with Lucas. Uh, and so we decided to head over to Jamie's and go through, you know, another couple tires and swap some tires out. And of course, now you see down there below uh, all of those boards, uh, except for one, say who's mm-hmm. There's still one mm-hmm. Vega down there. Uh, but every board down there at the bottom basically had been swapped out to a who's at this point in time. So <laughs> this was this was obviously back in the you know beginning uh, whenever swapping tires was really cool. So. Um, and you can see we what had some type cool rail guards in there, and it was a good time. What what ti- what tire do you love more to use? Well, so that's a great question. Um, I've been really addicted to the Whisper for quite a while. Um, although right now, uh, Michael Wilson, you know, I'd been telling him for a long time that I wanted something more carvy, and the guy answered my prayers, man. Uh, he actually dropped the Nimbus here recently. If you're not familiar. Uh, no. It's a much skinnier. Uh, what you would you like to see? Yes, of course. That is always very good for us to to, to learn. If it's something new, is always good. Well, I've got that. All right, so I'm gonna grab this and a whisper because we all know the whisper. Yeah. <laughs> so. Let here me we go. change here. Change here. So yeah. we have the Nimbus and the Whisper. Notice the difference in width here. Wow. The Nimbus is a significantly narrower, but now here's the deal. It's just as tall. So it's not like it's yeah. you know a yeah. much shorter tire here. It's the same height. Uh, it's okay. just a much narrower tire than the Whisper. Now, mm-hmm. what does that mean? Well, what that really means is you're going to get a whole lot more carve out of it. So... Uh, mm-hmm. You know, that's going to be a significant grade for guys like me who don't want the treads. Always liked the 5.5 Hoosier. Really thought it was a mm-hmm. cool tire. Thing was, you know, it's I, um, I, it's a little bit have, uh, buzzy. I have, I have in the moment the fi- uh, five, five, 5.5 out of the off-road. Yeah, well, that's what it is. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about is the off-road. It's, it's not a good tire, though, because it's just it treaded. Now, don't get me wrong. If you want to go off-road all the time, mm-hmm. treaded are great. For me, mm-hmm. I spend a little bit of time off-road. You know, I mean, I do some trail riding with Jamie and the boys, and, you know, I do mm-hmm. enjoy actually going out and exploring trails. But generally, I'm not racing hard enough on trails that I need a treaded. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, I don't like the mud on trails anyways, which is where the treaded comes in most useful. Um Just, that was just the, that. yeah. So yeah, the uh, <laughs> the treaded buzzes, you know. So you lose range, as well as you have that, you know, vibration in your foot. And mm-hmm. quite frankly, I don't like either uh, for street riding. You know, it makes a lot of sense if you're off road; it's great. Uh, but since I spend most of my time on road, it's just not the best for me. So yeah, yeah. I want a uh, slick. And the five five, I uh, I've been threatening to shave all the treads off of one at some point, but. Michael saved me the trouble and brought out the Nimbus, which <laughs> when it's mounted, it is really a cool tire. It makes the day, it looks just like a bowling ball. I love it. It's awesome. Can you explain, Can you explain to everybody, everybody maybe, maybe who don't know, don't know I, I, you, you, you send, send me this, send picture. this picture. I think that, I think is, that very is very important. Ah, so this is, speaking of tires, great segue there. Um, <laughs> you know, we... Um, Man, I'll, I'll tell the story of why first, and then I'll tell the what. Yes. So, you know, whenever we first, you know, I said we were changing tires. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Uh, so when we were first changing tires, the reason was because we used to have to send this back to Future Motion and get a tire change. So that meant if you popped a tire, it was no less than a month to get a tire change done. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not real thrilled about, you know, taking a month and you know eighty dollars plus the tire so you know 180 bucks for a tire change uh and a month <clears throat> okay yeah yeah 180 dollars for a stock tire and a month yeah no good so we decided to you know start changing our own tires where we'd get a flat well the thing is is the vega future motion shows relatively well there for a couple of reasons number one it's flat so for beginning riders it's great uh and number two it's thick as can be so mm-hmm. whenever it comes to punctures, they're a little bit tougher. They're not, you know, as easy to puncture. Good thing. 
However, when we started changing out to the Hoosier, we quickly found out that those more delicate, thin tires had a huge issue with punctures in Miami. Uh, Miami streets are not particularly clean. A lot of construction going on all the time uh, and just a lot of general debris from glass, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Well, uh, we started you know, going through a tire regularly. Uh, I was losing a tire uh, every two weeks at one point. Mm -hmm. There was like three tires I went through, like a month and a half, I went through three tires. I was so angry. It's like three hundred dollars for the freaking, you know, everything just doing yourself, right? It's um, very and expensive. I mean, you know, and I mean, no, I guess not quite three hundred. So I guess it was only seventy dollars shipped for a tire. So I mean, I guess I was only spending, you know, two hundred and ten dollars on all three. Whoop, great! In a month and a half, two hundred and ten bucks on tire. Plus, it's I spent, you know, I don't know. And and at that time, I was not quite as good at changing them out. So I think I probably also spent like four hours of my time doing it, right? So mm -hmm. $200, four hours of my time, not a great deal. Well, okay, fast forward to me being in Key West. I was already frustrated with flat tires, not a big fan. Out riding with my girlfriend and some friends in Key West, and I come off a curb, and I just hear a click, click, and you just know. You know, you hear that hissing and the clicking, and you're like, oh, hell, I've got something in my tire. So I pull over, pull it out, and it's a screw, of course. And the tires goes instantly dead flat. So, okay, well, let's go to the auto parts store here in Key West, which, by the way, try to find an auto parts store in Key West. Uh, but it, you find, eventually we did find slime. And I put more slime in there. I put, like, a ton of slime into the tire. Didn't even begin to seal it. It lost all the pressure pretty quickly. Made a mess with the slime, you know, so it was now messy and flat. That was great. Uh, but it didn't help anything. And of course, you know, even whenever the slime did work, it would leak down overnight. You know, you'd leave it and you'd come the next day to go ride and your tire's flat. You have to air it back up. Then you get to go ride and you come back the next day again. It's flat, you know, super fun. Really a frustrating experience, even if the tire's is very, flat. very bad. Right. So I said, this is enough. And after that experience in Key West, where I lost a full day of riding with my friends, and I'd driven down to Key West to go do this. I mean, it was it, Key West for me is a day, okay? I mean, it's not like Key West is even close from Miami. Key West is a long ways away. And so I go there, we go to ride. I lose the tire. Okay, so now I've lost a day of riding. Boy, I'm annoyed. I come back to Miami and I'm like, I'm gonna solve this. I went out, I bought every sealant you can buy. Every commercial sealant that you can get your hands on. I mean, I went to Amazon. I went to the auto parts store. I went online and searched for some weird things out there, right? Like, I basically bought out everything you can find. And I, I mean, we're talking like 30 different kinds of sealant here, right? So, and I, I was just trying each one of these. I was just basically, I was taking an old tire uh, that had a big pole in it. And I was mm -hmm. doing it as I put it on there. Um, and I basically, you know, air it up and it's the, it's see if it hold. And there was one or two that worked pretty okay. Uh, not great, but a lot better than slime. Uh, mm -hmm. And there was a couple of, there was a couple, a, a theme started to show up in what was working and what was not working, right? So mm -hmm. I, I started to understand what made a good tire sealant. Unfortunately, I also realized that no tire sealant out there on the market was meant to deal with big holes in a little tiny thin tire. These things are made for automobile tires. These things are made for yeah. ATV yeah. tires. These things are made for not what we're doing. There's no tires. Mm -hmm. These are racing tires. These are racing slick for a cart. Yeah, for you don't cart. use yeah. tire sealant in a racing cart because the tire's lifespan is measured in hours, oftentimes minutes. You know, these, these tires mm -hmm. have a lifespan of minutes, not, mm -hmm. you know, a long period of time. So, tires, yeah, it's, it's for a race, you know. So, tire sealant in a racing tire, there's a, there's a serious mismatch of concept here, right? Um, yeah. It's just not, yeah. it's not something you do. But for us, we're wanting these tires to last for a year sometimes. You know, we want these things to last. Um, so Noel Blocks just asked, tire seal makes my wheels unbalanced. Normal? Well, yes, but there's a couple of different tire sealant technologies. There's really two types of plug forming sealant and one type of chemical sealant. So let's talk real quickly about your problem there. Uh, if your wheel is out of balance, and you have, you know, uh, a, a, a vibration from tire mm -hmm. sealing. 
uh, there's really only two things that could be causing them. Well, three things. We're going to say there's three things. The most common is you've used a tire sealant like slime that adheres to the tire, so it sticks. I could show you a video of this, but just trust me, it's the way it works. If you put slime on a plate and you turn it, the, the slime just, it, it slowly uh, oozes down, but it leaves a thick coating. Um, maybe I'll go grab a plate and show you this. This is fun. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you have enough yeah, time. Of course, um, you have time, my friend. Okay, well, I'll show you. So, and the thing is, I'll explain first, and then I'll show you. Yeah. If it coats, if it coats, the thing is, is then you have it. You want to coat it evenly, and you want to make sure that as it coats, it you have enough to actually coat it evenly, and you have to make sure that it's all balanced out. If it runs down overnight or something like that and gets cold and becomes thicker, uh, you know, so if it's hot and it runs down and it gets cold and it's thick. Then, okay, so the wheel starts balance, he says. So that right there is probably a flow rate issue with the stuff. Um, how mm -hmm. much do you have in there? Can you tell me there? Because if you have a whole Please lot in there, us. so it's okay. It doesn't really matter. I'll answer it without him answering. If you have mm -hmm. a whole lot or a whole, just a very little, so a bunch or a little inside of the tire, especially whenever you have a type that tries to adhere, what happens is, is you're going to get globs of it in there. Well, sure, it can be prevented, and that's one of the reasons why Armadillo's is out. Um, so two things that it does. Not only can it make your wheel unbalanced, which is really annoying, okay, but secondary to that, it can also make it to where it's uh, you know going to slow you down. Uh, whenever mm -hmm. that stuff's adhering to the wheel, this is something we know from racing. Racers will pay a whole lot of money for a lighter drive shaft for a lighter flywheel, for a lighter you know, gear set, anything that removes weight, uh, rods, pistons, anything that removes weight from the reciprocating assembly of the engine matters a great deal because that weight takes away power much more readily than sprung weight, which is what we call weight that's you know the driver, the seats, the metal work, all of this. The, the reciprocating weight has a whole lot more energy put into it, and so therefore any extra weight takes out a lot more from the system. Same thing with a tire. Uh, so if you're adding weight in a tire, uh, either through rubber or through sealant that's adhering to the tire, you're going to actually lose acceleration. You're going to lose top speed. You're going to lose range a little bit, probably not a lot, but a little bit of range. Now, the thing about it is, is if you have a tire sealant like Armadillo's, this flows. So the idea is that it does not adhere. Uh, it does not coat the tire. It does not stick to the tire. At higher speeds, it will. However, it does so through the simple centrifugal force, which means that it actually balances the tire. Uh, so armadillos, because it's actually slipping and sliding very freely, when you take off, uh, the, and you can actually, again, on the channel, if you look around on my channel, you can find a video of us actually with a tire uh, showing how the sealant flows inside of the tire. Uh, it does not stick. It does not adhere. Uh, you may find it on the Armadillo's channel, and you may find it here. Scroll up. It'll be up a bit if it's in here. Um, not there. That's definitely not it. This is just an install video. Uh, yeah, it's none of those. And it may not even be a public video. I'd have to go find it for us. But I can show you on a plate anyways. Yeah. It's much easier just to demonstrate on a plate. Uh, mm -hmm. But the idea is, is that it flows freely, and it, it's almost like a snail. You know, when a snail goes over top of something, it leaves this very thin film of uh, mucus. <laughs> well, ours mm -hmm. actually does use a biopolymer gel, uh, so it's very much like a snail trail coating uh, inside the mm -hmm. tire. So it makes a very slick coating on the tire, and then you have this glob of material in the bottom. Uh, that actually uh, it just kind of sits in the bottom and it just you know stays pooled up. The tire slips right past it. This doesn't sit there and do much of anything, but just sit there. You get to higher speed, like I said, and centrifugal force will make it spread out around the tire. But again, mm -hmm. this does two things when that happens. Number one, uh, you're going to go ahead and get a little bit of reduction in vibration from uh, you know being out of balance. Probably it should, unless it's severely out of balance, and then it may not help. But good morning to you. That's good good morning, you. Australia. How are you? Hello, so, Sandra. What we want to do uh, is we, you know, whenever it gets coated around the tire, it does go ahead and reduce the vibration just from that, uh, from balancing it out a little bit, just because of the physics of it. And more than that, because of it being actually, uh, you know, adding a little bit of mass at that time, uh, it does also reduce noise. So it make it a little bit quieter. However, uh, just like anything, <clears throat> the added mass could probably cost just a tiny little bit of top speed, just a tiny little bit of range. 
Um, but, you know, it's not something that makes much of a difference. Um, yeah, slime's a terrible experience. So, you know what, real quickly, uh, I'm going to show you real quickly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to talk about why that matters so much. Because mm. whenever you have this stuff coated around the tire, guess what? You only have what's stuck to the tire to seal a puncture. So you mm -hmm. literally have to have whatever you need stuck to the inside of the tire. Uh, in my system, the way that I've made it work, uh, at the bottom of the tire, you have this wonderful pool of material. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you have a puncture, uh, yeah, that's a fact too. Yeah, you're losing a lot of range. We've measured it. Mm -hmm. We're talking, by the way, we're talking like maybe a one to three percent on a really bad day with a whole lot of sealant. So it's not a like lot. a significant, not like a significant loss. You know, um, it's a lot. If you, right. Well, I mean, you know, so if you're one to three percent, you know, if you're if you're going to run say 20 miles, you might lose 0.2 miles on a bad day. Um, and that's probably unlikely to lose even that much. Uh, mm -hmm. So anyways, let me go grab a plate real quick. And I'm yeah, going to show okay, you yeah. guys, uh, the difference between the way slime uh, actually works and the way that armadillos works in the way it adheres. I'll be right back. Please, one minute. Uh, Curry, thank you very much to helping uh, all of the community. That is very good. Hey, Sandra, I just want to say hello, my darling. I want to see you again. I, we have to talk. And for everybody's there or is going to see the video later, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, I'm going to leave all the links from Curry. He has a, a YouTube channel. He has a, uh, his Instagram, his Facebook. I'm going to leave it all there. Please subscribe by his channel. Yeah. And he's back. Always a new interview. Grab one of these, yeah. and now I'm gonna grab a demonstration plate. You're right back. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. I want to make you an in interview. I'm going to talk with you later. I'm going to ride you later. I want to make something with you and the girls. But I, I talked with you. I'm going to ride to you. For everybody is there. If you have a friend, if you have a rider, just uh, uh, contact us. Oh. So, so we're going to use we're going to use a dinner plate for this demonstration. It makes let's, a great. Let's, 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 so yeah, no, what we're going to do is we're going to first off we're going to look at the consistency of these products, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that one of the things we have to realize, by the way, this is brand new. Just so you know, this is this is not like I refilled this with something. This is mm -hmm. actually <laughs> this is the real stuff, new. right? New. So. And so whenever we take this, and we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to tilt it out here. Mm -hmm. Notice. Okay. It's good and thick stuff, right? So it's not yeah. like, you know, this is in any way significantly thinner or more watery. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm going to make a nice big pile of it here. Okay. There we go. Nice big pile. Now, I'm going to show off a little bit here. So this is, this is a bit of fun uh -huh. we can have. So this stuff, first off. Oh. Oh. This, this is like plastic. Like plastic. Yep. So, ready? Now, we're going to go ahead and get a load of this out of there. Now, mm -hmm. we're going we're gonna to have a race with this stuff. Ready? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, not only that, but watch this. As we get it to go, the slime stays balled up. You see how it doesn't flow very well? And now we're going to mm -hmm. go back the other way. Watch this. Now, watch. Notice how the slime's just coating it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Boy, it's, uh, it's, it's a big mess. Right. So what you're seeing is the difference in flow rate and the way that it actually coats. You don't want it to coat like that. If you put it on a plate and coat you the, have the, the, coat the cheese. cheese. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I mean, you, you know, if it's if it's just if it won't move freely on the plate, if it just makes a sticky mess. It's probably not going to work that well, uh, and the reason is, no. is that you want the material free in the tire to plug a puncture. Um, punctures happen at the bottom of tires. Uh, if you can mm -hmm. keep the sealant at the bottom of the tire, or at least be able to get it to move there, uh, you've got a lot better chance of plugging uh, the hole. I didn't so, really believe it. And, and in addition to that, here's the next thing: slime and the other sealants out there, many of them have only particles of rubber in. Them. Um, they're not uh, using Kevlar and other fibers in them to prevent uh, the things from coming out. So the way my particular sealant works, those things, they, they, want, uh, they want to just pack full of rubber. 
They think that, you know, you're going to have a small hole. The rubber particles will come in there. They'll pack in there. Good. Sealant, done. What we do is we have fibers of Kevlar of two different lengths that are significant. We put in a few other small uh, blended fibers, but two significant lengths, uh, one of which is the uh, pulp. Uh, it looks like little microscopic feathers. They're, they're very neat looking, tiny, tiny little branched uh, polymers. So what we actually do uh, is take those and put them into the product along with a longer fiber Kevlar, um, especially, and we use heavier loads of this in like the blue product, because uh, we want to bridge the larger gaps that we're going to see in inner tubes and especially thin tires on like the, uh, you know, the big fat tire e-bikes and those things. So what we try to do though, is we have to get this inside of the stem, right? So we have to be able to get this inside of the tire. Uh, what we actually do is we blend this so thickly and so strongly that once it's inside of the tire, uh, it's no longer, this looks really quite smooth. Uh, once mm -hmm. it gets inside of the tire, all of these fibers start tangling up into one another and they actually build little beautiful, they're like little cobwebs uh, of material inside of the tire. And what happens is it's um, armored dillos. And in fact, uh, yep. just so you know, this yeah. is my brand. I, I invented this. So. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. want to say to uh, 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 Sandra, you are in Australia. The guys there, the one wheels, your friends, uh, you have to show them. I think that is going to be a fantastic idea for all of them. I'm just going to put here the picture, and I'm going to leave it, and then I'm going to send you all the links for you to uh, uh, show to your friends because I know the One Wheel Group in Australia is very big, and uh, that is a way, and if they have the chance, see the video, is explaining everything, how everything works, and I think that is very important for you to learn a little more like me. I'm learning a lot in this moment, and that is very important for all of us. Now, please continue, my friend. So Sorry. what happens is, no, you're good, you're good. So it builds these kind of balls of loose fiber. Just think of them as like almost cobwebs, like you find you know, in the corner of your home or mm -hmm. you know, a lint ball, really. It's just, it's very fluffy. And inside of this, there is rubber. So little pieces of rubber of different sizes. We use flattened platelet type rubber of various sizes and actually quite a bit larger than other brands for our largest size. Uh, what we actually do is we, we form these balls of mixes of the rubber and the fibers inside of the tire. And they're just moving around inside of this slurry. Uh, so it's, it's truly, you know, just this kind of, it, it looks terrible. It's this ugly, ugly stuff inside of the tire. Uh, but what happens is if you ever get a puncture, you've got all of these little tiny particles in there and all of these bigger wads of stuff that will try to go out through the hole and the fibers will catch on any irregularities in the rubber. So there's always irregularities in any puncture. Uh, even the most microscopic will actually catch these fibers very well, uh, which brings me to the point that if you do order this, uh, we typically ship it with the end coat not cut. So mm -hmm. we do not cut this end off. Uh, we want you to cut this, and this one's cut open uh, enough. But what you want to do is cut it with a very sharp knife. Uh, occasionally, mm -hmm. we'll get a complaint from people that the bottle won't flow sealant out. And what they have done is they've cut it with a slightly dull knife. Uh, it mm -hmm. leaves a little bit of uh, jagged edge on the end of the cap, and it will immediately plug up um, because that's what it does. So use an extremely sharp uh, blade. You know, that's a great question. I think we could do that. <laughs> yeah, I think we could do that. Uh, how about how yeah. about we call the code uh, No Limits? How about that? And we'll yeah, ten percent. We'll do ten percent off all sealant products for the next couple of weeks. Uh, no limits. How's that sound, guys? Okay. No, you all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go put hold on. I'm gonna go put it in right now because I don't want to be <laughs> making myself a liar here accidentally by forgetting. So uh, I'm actually I'm actually heading in right now as we speak here, and this will be live in just a moment. So, but please, uh, so anyway, may, may, continuing on, please. Uh, so what happens please. is is as this stuff tries to force itself out through the hole, uh, it actually creates a very hardened, compacted ball of fibers and uh, these rubber particles that gets compressed down as it tries to squeeze out through the hole and forms a physical plug a permanent physical, well, I should say semi-permanent physical plug. Uh, uh, sorry, that I, absolutely I just, sorry, I just want to say, Sandra, uh, that is the stuff, but that is invented for a guy who creates something for us. He's a one-wheel rider, and he creates this stuff for us, and that's his curry, and we have to be thankful for him 
to doing these things for all of us. That's why we bring everybody. And the second thing is a fantastic writer, is a fantastic photographer. Is he knows the first of all the community. He knows he listen to the community, and that is the important thing for all of us. Having a, a person here who can explain to us what is better, not just putting a product out, is explaining why is better. Well, I hope it's a value. I do truly hope it's a value. Yeah, most valuable yeah. sign. So, um, so anyhow, uh, basically the way that it works is it forms a permanent plug that effectively uh, will stop any leaks from occurring. And again, it is semi-permanent. So um, it's a lot better than the other solutions out there which tend to leak down over time or fail or like the case of fix a flat, which you have to get it out of the tire and all of that. So you can't use it for very long. Mountain board tires, uh, if you're going, so it's very simple guys. If you want a good deal, we make green. Green's a good deal. If you want to go <laughs> over 30 miles per hour, use blue. If you aren't going over 30 miles per hour and you want the very best thing you can get, get black, uh, the red. So if you want the very best you can get, it's red, but again, not good for over 30 miles per hour. That's the big key here is not good for oh. over 30 miles. That is good to know. Right. That's why it's the way, different 30, 30, from the color. Alexa, what is 30 miles per hour in kilometers? I think it's 50. No, it's that 40, 48. Yeah, so 50 kilometers per hour. Don't go over 50 kilometers per hour with this. <laughs> no, so, I, you don't need it, my friend. <laughs> you, so, you, you uh, the, the, blue, the blue is good. The blue is good for you know much faster. Uh, you can go very, very fast with the blue or the green, uh, but with the red, you don't want to go faster than 50 kilometers per hour. So, yeah, th that is very good. Yeah, so and, uh, yeah, okay. Zach, there you're gonna you're gonna want the blue. Uh, if you're gonna ride 45 plus mile an hour, go with the blue. Uh, it's got the higher flow rate, which is gonna you know keep it running well at that speed. Also, uh, it, with our product, there is one way to talking about you know out of balance vibration. There's only one way to make ours out of out of balance. Use too little or too much. Um, if mm -hmm. you do that, it can vibrate. Uh, but as long as you don't use too little and you don't use too much, you're good. And the uh, question no, like Zach, this. Zach, you won't want you won't want red at 45 mile an hour. Uh, you could mix the blue and the red 50-50 if you wanted for a purple, and you'd be okay at 45. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I mean, blue is going to be a much safer option at 45 mile an hour. Um, what I'd say is get the blue, use the blue, and if you ever have a puncture, top it up with red. Uh, that'll give you a little extra protection. So, anyways, that's all about sealant. Let's move on to something else so we don't bore everybody too much here. No, 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 <laughs> my friend. The information is very good. That's why I have another question. Wait, wait. I don't want to stop here. I just want to know uh, uh, for the persons who are out from USA, like Australia, like Europe, with this uh, covid is easy for send it or you having a problem? Great question. So in Australia, you're going to find that we have Hell 13 and, oh my goodness, I, I'm so sorry for forgetting the other one right now. Uh, we've got at least two dealers in Australia right now. Anna keeps so much better track of this than me. I'm so busy doing other things. I'm She's she's the superstar whenever it comes to knowing everybody and uh, making sure, you know, the everybody gets listed, so on. So forgive me, but we have uh, dealers in uh, a lot of countries now. In fact, if you check our page, uh, armadillos.com, we have a dealers list there. Uh, and you can, uh, yeah, armor-dillos- dash second. I'm going to put it like this, like and then we can we can continue to talk it, and I'm going to change it here very fast. Yeah. I can actually probably send you a link too. Uh, no, don't you need it. I, you you no can problem. continue to talk, and I'm going and to. So what we here. what we do though is uh, we basically I so I, I said that I went out and tried every sealant. You know, we we stopped mm -hmm. there. So what actually happened was that I you know went out and tried everything out there. I mean, just tried everything, and unfortunately. Uh, you know, it turned out that there was nothing out there that was really performing to the specification that I wanted. There was mm -hmm. some stuff that came, you know, to a level that was far more acceptable 
uh, than what I'd you know gotten out of slime and most of the commercial stuff. But nothing was really working well with these little tiny tires of ours that were super thin and delicate. By the way, I just sent you that in Facebook chat. Um, okay. So anyway, uh, what I did was is I actually took the technology uh, that I saw working well. And I just ramped it up to an extreme level, um, to a level that commercial processing equipment, commercial mixing equipment cannot handle. Uh, in fact, we have to use one horsepower blenders uh, and mix it just a couple gallons at a time. Um, because in fact, uh, and we use very really sharp bladed mixers like you'd use for uh, like a margarita. Uh, mm -hmm. But so we use really, really sharp bladed stick blenders uh, to actually stuff in enough fibers and rubber uh, without it just clogging up the machinery. If you try to do this in a slow mix machinery like you use for most industrial processes, mm -hmm. uh, it just actually catches all the fiber and pulls it out of the process. So uh, mm -hmm. you cannot actually make it with traditional machinery. So there you go. Uh, I think that's a mostly up to date list. Echo Motions. Echo Motions is from Australia. Yes, and the other one and the other one is the A Rides. Writers. And also down one more. Hell 13 is down there as well. Ah, yes. Hell 13 too? Yes. yes. That is the go. three one. And in Europe, guys, you have uh, like uh, in Europe uh, and you have in France, the, that yes. is the free motion. Free that move, is the guys who represent. Guys. Uh, yeah, the, the, the free move is that the guys who, who work for the one wheel. That is a, a very fast company to, to send you. I know that because I buy from them too. Uh, then you have in Austria. Hey, my friend, you from Austria, you asking. You have a shop in Austria. That he is a uh, uh, scooter uh, uh, shop. Then it's easy for you. In uh, in England, you have another nice shop. Then, guys, you are from uh, if you are from UK, it's easy. Uh, and uh, from Poland, and of course, from uh, Netherlands, is easy for us here in Germany or France. Is uh, very easy for us, and you have in Czech Republic too. There is lots yep. of places. I'm going to leave the link here, guys, for all of you. Uh, 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 and uh, then you can see all the, the, the things is by him. Tell it, tell us a little more about your uh, web, your website, and your, your this company, please, for everybody who wants to know. So really, you know, I, like I said, I had gotten tired of flat tires to the point that I came home determined to solve the problem. Um, $5,000, maybe a little more than $5,000. I had the first bottle of this in my hand. Um, I had to make it myself, truly. So we experimented around. Uh, we tried different formulations. We played more. And finally, we came to one where it became a joke that we could not kill the tires. We were truly, you know, laughing and stabbing these tires with things. I stuck a pair of pliers in a tire as a joke. Pliers. I put pliers into a tire. And, yeah, this one, I, I stabbed it, I think, uh, I think I stabbed this tire something like 70 times in this video. And before this, you see that it's already got a mess. I had stuck a half-inch <laughs> screwdriver through it. It had a half-inch screwdriver already put through this tire. Um, that's a half-inch hole. I mean, <laughs> massive massive hole and i'd been riding on it for days already it just you know um it kept blowing out you know like actually leaking a little and then sealing back up and leaking a little and sealing back it was <laughs> terrible but it kept working and that was the point so uh i just continued to go and go and go hard at it uh, and uh yeah eventually we found it to where it was just really a joke that we couldn't kill the tires anymore uh mm -hmm. and um yeah. So once that happened, I basically said to my friends, you know, hey, would you guys like some of this? And they said, well, hell yeah, I would. Of course I want some of that. Can I please try it? And so I sent out some samples to friends. Um, like two months later, uh, I started getting some feedback of, holy cow, dude, this stuff is amazing. Can I get more? Um, yeah. So I started, I really never intended to make a lot of it. I really thought I was just making it for myself. Um, mm -hmm. I truly had intended to just do this for me and my friends to uh, stop having flats because I was so terribly frustrated with it. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, uh, after that, uh, it started you know, becoming obvious that people really liked it. Uh, and so at that point, I reached out to a friend, Kai Miller, a uh, guy who designed this awesome shirt that I'm wearing here, uh, and also <laughs> the guy who designed our company logo. 
Kai designed the logo here as well. Uh, you know, and he's a he's a great artist, a great member of the community. He's designed some really cool T-shirts throughout the years. Over, uh, I just want, you know, I, some... I just want to put here something in the back for everybody to see. Look at Absolutely. this. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, we, we we do real testing. You know, we don't we don't you know halfway things around here. So how, anyway, how many times so, uh, how, how many time do you take to put this product out? How many tests do you make it, my friend? How oh, many months? Did you... It was it was five months, six months of testing before we really actually released a product. Um, that is crazy. Heck, man. It, may been, it may have been more than that, even actually. I guess, really, in all honesty, it was probably more like eight months. Um, but with that being said, uh, you know, once we found a product that was working, and I started sharing it with my friends, and my friends started, you know, telling their friends, and all of a sudden there was enough demand that. My kitchen uh, became a blending center, and I'm living in a one-bedroom condo. Uh, started, you know, having you know five-gallon buckets around the condo that I'm, you know, blending one tiny little blender at a time, and actually, uh, you know, sticking together, uh, mixing components. And <laughs> how many? Then I'm, how then many, make, then how many did you put it? How many well, did you so put I, in your? Oh, this I put many, many even this time. You got to, you have to, you can't be sure with one. You have to, you have to do multiple. You have to be very sure. It's, you have to be very, very certain. It's actually in, at the end of this video. I actually grab an awl, that red-handled awl right there, and I that literally puncture crazy. this tire like seventy times. I put like seventy holes in this tire in this video. It's still wow, fine. It's no problem. Crazy man. That it's is amazing, isn't good. it? You know that is very, very crazy. <laughs> that that was that was how we felt. You know, I mean, I that, that was that was truly. You know, once we found when we found this formula, it was the eureka moment, right? It was like, mm -hmm. wow, this works. Wow, it's unbelievable. Yeah, because uh, there is about one week. I have the Super Sport uh, seventy three, the yes, bike, great, and great and I, and I have a pump. And when I knew, I I I have to bought it. I have to buy it. Uh, then it, that means that for me, the better one for me to till for forty-five uh, kilometers is the the the, red. the the green red. The red. Okay. Well, so green, green. If you want a better deal, green is good. It's a mm -hmm. better price. But red will be the best performance. No, Although green leave it is with still the red. very good. Green is very very good. Red is just mm -hmm. a bit better. My God, look how many. <laughs> and no it's closed. No problem. Yes, just like that. Man, make sure I to get all the sealant it. there. It's all good. Now, right here, you're going to see me. I, I laugh about it, and I uh you can see it's not bubbling, of course. You know, it's clean, uh -huh. it's, it's all sealed up. Mm -hmm. But I grab this, I grab this all now and watch. You'll see me put 70 holes in it. None of them will leak. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have to believe you. <laughs> I'm really not going to try it. It's actually, it's, it's actually a little sweet, but really it tastes terrible. I'm joking. It's got a terrible flavor. Wow. That is crazy. I mean, how many, time, how many holes do you need? You can see no, the ceiling coming out as I do it. Yeah, you can yeah. see the ceiling poking out. Wow, that is crazy. And it just doesn't leak. No problem. I didn't imagine, my friend. Sorry, yeah. because I never see. I see it, but I never see a video. I never see the video <laughs> like this. That is like crazy. That is uh, like for me is like uh, a bless. Because I go lots of off road, my friend. Oh well, if you go off road, this is yes. It's a very nice thing to have. Nobody wants to carry their board back. Nobody wants to push their bike back. This is not fun. Uh, I you carry know, my back. I, I carry my bike. Uh, my bike. There's about one week, uh, four miles. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, that's what we. That's what we never want you to have to do again. And you can see the fibers. I'm picking the fibers out here. What you see me doing there is pulling the fibers out. So you can actually see me pulling on fibers that are sticking through the holes there. Um, I did you know, here, I'm, I'm, here, I'm, here I'm lamenting that I have to ride the Vega more. I was really hoping I would kill it because I was so tired of riding on the Vega. Uh, but no, it turns out it turns out that I couldn't kill it. I, I ended up actually riding that tire for like another three days. And I literally just grabbed, I grabbed a knife and I was like, here, let's see how wide I can cut it. Yeah, that finally killed it. So <laughs> oh my God. a nice so, way to say that you don't like the Vega. <laughs> no, I really don't. So guys, and just to be very clear, not to oversell the product. It's still, it's still just technology. This is not magic. It, it was not, it is, it is just tire sealant. Okay.
Okay. With that being said, I've taken the technology about as far as it can go. Uh, so, you know, I mean, still, if it gets cut with a knife or a big piece of glass, yeah, it's still going to leak air. Um, you know, I mean, there are certain things that we just can't overcome, but for almost anything that can puncture a tire, you're fine. Um, yeah. and just, to, just to do an illustration, I made some custom puncture tools eventually. Let me show you the difference between, you know, yeah. a nail slap hole and a big hole. Kind of before I put them in here. Oh, you have a nice A scooter there. Oh yes, I like I like my Wolf Warrior very much. The Wolf <laughs> is a good scooter. Yeah, coming bigger, coming bigger and bigger in USA. The A so scooter. So now we use the Vega which is a relatively thick tire for our certification process, right? Because that is the stock tire. But this right here is a standard size nail and a pretty good size nail at that. This would be like a mm -hmm. framing nail you might find in a house. Mm -hmm. This is what we can stick into a tire and still get a seal every time. Um, so in the stock one wheel tire, I can stick this through. Now, obviously on the super delicate slicks, it's about 50-50 with something this size. It's not an every time thing with a huge hole like this on the really delicate like whisper slick. Um, but with that being said, it's still a 50, 50, uh, and this is a half inch hole. Uh, so we use this tool to actually, uh, do occasional testing on batches, uh, just to make sure things are still working as expected. They do every time. Um, mostly just an excuse for me to punch a hole in a Vega for fun. Um, we actually did that on a live stream. It was very fun. We, we actually took a brand new board out of the box and did this on a live stream. Um, and then I, and then by the way, and by the way, let me point this out. So on this live stream, we did actually take out a brand new board. I punched this in the board. Okay. So brand new Vega, mm -hmm. this deflated it. It was no problem. This would not even begin to seal. Okay. So this right here okay. killed the stock Vega. I mean, killed it dead, killed it immediately without doubt. It was done. We then took and we moved on up all the way up to this thing. And this thing, by the way, I could barely get it in. I mean, we're talking 230 pounds pushing down into it, and it still wouldn't go in. I had to twist and turn, which actually ended up tearing up the rubber pretty badly doing that. So that wouldn't happen in a puncture. Um, but it still sealed just fine. Uh, so we went out for a ride. Uh, actually ended up going riding through some protests and uh, took a couple miles of ride all on live stream. So this is all on Facebook live stream. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no doubt that, you know, this is a proof that we can mm -hmm. indeed take this, stick it into a brand new tire, uh, mm -hmm. and still continue to ride. So um, we've this we've actually when we, a lot of companies out there like to claim a lot of things, um, but they don't really like you. Want, you they, don't, they don't really you, have you, the they don't have the bravery to do it live and show that they will do what they say they do. We do, and you show it live. We do directly. And, and that look, is I, the important I'm, thing. A, I'm at a company that's built on underselling and overperforming. Um, whenever you undersell and overperform, it's pretty comfortable to do so on live TV, you know, so not a big deal. And what is this video, my friend? Uh, so this is a scooter tire, a uh, quick uh, demonstration on how to install, uh, and how, you know, it works. I think we just did a puncture test on this and made it squirt out some there. I think so. Not really sure. Or maybe, no, maybe we're, uh, I don't know, we're wrapping this video. <laughs> the installation, and, oh, the testing. Yeah. The, the, so this, the, is, okay. this, is, this is how to install on a scooter tire. And, okay. you know, I'm demonstrating here that if you uh, do it this way and leave it down at the bottom, it'll squirt out. Okay, so see how it squirts out? If uh -huh. you leave it down at the bottom, you'll make a mess. You don't want to do that. Okay, so what you yeah. want to do is you want to install it whenever you have the valve up at the side. So you take the valve and you want to run... Here we go. Put the valve at the top now. See how I do this? So we can actually run sealant in there without it coming back out. You got to have some place for the sealant to go. You can't put it at mm -hmm. the very bottom and expect it to work because uh, it'll just puke okay. it right back. Out. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in. We're going to pressurize the tire, put on a gauge. Uh -huh. And uh, you'll see me actually uh, stab the tire with the gauge on there. And you can see that it's you know being stabbed but, but not losing any pressure at all. So, but that 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 uh, sorry, I'm going to come back, guys. I, 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 I think I think that is very important for all of us. Uh, 
it. Let me see here. I, I, I like to put this back because I think that is interesting because uh, for information. Yeah, if, you, if you have any problem exploring it, if it's at the bottom, you, you cannot have the vowel at the bottom. You want it like the ideally at the four o'clock or seven o'clock or eight o'clock, mm -hmm. four o'clock or eight o'clock. You want it up off the ground a little bit so that you have some place or it'll puke back out like this. Ready? Watch it. That is the same with that is the same with the one wheel. Same with the one wheel as well. Uh, a little bit. Okay. The one wheel has such a big tire that it doesn't really matter. But if you're okay. putting in a lot, it can puke out a little. I still I still move the valve stem up just a little ways to give it free room. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we put in a little seal in here. We're going to put back in the valve score. And then mm -hmm. towards the end of the video here, you'll see that I've got the gauge put on here. And what we do is we uh, actually move back, move back a bit. So go backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, Give me a second. Yeah, I think you want to be at like, so this is a 30 minute long video. And what we actually yeah. did here was, is I stabbed the tire and left the gauge on it. So you can see that it doesn't leak down over time. Uh, so it's just, it just sits there and holds pressure the entire time. And you can see that it's, uh, you know, 30 minutes later, even after being stabbed multiple times, it still has fine pressure. Give me a second. I want to put it because if you put it here. So, yeah, this right here has been, you know, obviously a big deal for us uh, because there we go. That's me stabbing it. So you see where mm -hmm. it squirted on me? You can see where it actually just squirted on me there. So we know that mm -hmm. it's uh, – this is before I built my purpose-built tool. Okay. Oh, that's crazy. It was hard to stick things in there. You see why I had the tools built? Yeah. Right? <laughs> I think I eventually just gave up using it all again. Wow, that's crazy. That is a nice video. I'm going to put guys, I'm going to put the videos then there for you two guys to see. I think and I'm going to bake in my media, then you can see it. How 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 good is that? I didn't know. And here we go. So yeah. there we go. You see me stabbing it again with oh. this. Obviously, you know that there we go, right? So you can see that it's actually you know, squirting sealant everywhere, right? So you yeah. know it's got holes, right? Now, and what you'll see, though, is that the pressure gauge there will still hold uh, for a good long time, uh, mm -hmm. 30 minutes. We, we let it sit there for, well, 20 minutes, okay. whatever it was at this point. And okay. it just in holds pressure. Moment, in this moment, is in six minutes. Then we're going to put a, about, uh, 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 then you're going to come back here. That is, uh, now it's with 11 minutes. And the pressure is close to the same. Yep. Then we're going to go to 60 minutes. I may have aired it up here. There we go. Uh, let me see what Because it leaks air more at higher pressures. So we wanted to uh -huh. pressure it up, make sure that you know it held at the higher pressure. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And you can see the fibers sticking out here. So you can actually see the plug yeah, sticking yeah. out to the tire. Mm -hmm. That's the outside of the plug. Oh, that is crazy. I didn't imagine. Believe it, my friend. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I am a guy. I think sometimes I have lots of experience. I see you uh, for everybody who don't know. I, I uh, know Curry uh, from the uh, uh, beginning. I start one YouTube channel with a one wheel. Uh, one wheel uh, elite uh, riders, and I invite them to come as moderator. And uh, and I never, never imagine that you are the person who create this. And and then that, that's what I see how, how stupid sometimes we are, that we have so much to learn. And that's why I make this uh, channel because see, you learn so much. Yeah, now I'm yeah. now I know, my friend. So the, I invited you, I, I, guys. I invited him. I invited him. Uh, uh, that is so stupid. I invited him, and I was not knowing that he has his company. I invited him as a rider, as a person who always do so many things for the uh, groups, and I never imagined that you created that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm so I'm so uh, uh, embarrassed. But that is so oh, no, good. No, there's. Hey, look, I I I think that you know I, I like to have many things about me. It makes me happy that people know me for different things. Um, 
I, I don't want everybody to know me for the same things. It's more fun for me this way. I, I know you. I know you because I see so many pictures you made. Uh, so many guys that you put uh, uh, out uh, and the best pictures come out from you. And I know how you enjoy riding. I know that you, how you have so many friends. But uh, I didn't imagine that you create so... Uh, when, when, I, when I think to myself... Uh, and I'm I'm lots of years in this, and and when I think to myself, I don't know this, uh, uh, and so when boring. I and uh, uh, I, uh, that is like impressive. <laughs> I, I'm, well, I'm very happy. Well, so hold on, I'm going to show you guys something else too. We've uh, just started putting a new uh, coating on the dragon tails. Check this out. Uh, okay, my friend, thank you. Hey guys, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, I just want to say here, uh, Yoko, how are you, my friend? And he gets there. Okay. So, Yoko, uh, I, I saw that. I saw that. Uh, and yes, it does work in tube tires as well. In fact, that scooter tire you were just looking at me stabbing, that was a tube mm -hmm. tire. Um, mm -hmm. It works great in tubes. The blue is preferred for tubes most of the time. Um, if it, it, but with that being said, the red still is a really good product if you've got big holes. So, it's a 50 50 there. Um, you know, but yeah, it works great. Now, uh, let's just see if we can look at this. So, give, give me a ooh, second. Give me a second. Brand new, brand new, beautiful texture coating on the dragon tail. Uh, if you're not familiar ooh. with this, this is the uh, wonderfully cool little spark plate we build uh, to make your one wheel throw fire when you do a tail drag. Yes, I have here. I, I want to show it. I, I see it. I see it. I'm, I'm, I'm like crazy. Sorry, my friend. I, uh, you make me uh, like a baby again today. <laughs> Dude, that's what, that's what makes one wheel great that's what makes one wheel great though it makes us all into big kids right i mean i yeah, think that's one of the reasons why point. i like it so much is it it truly does just make us into big kids and i think that's a great yeah thing. i was like i was not expecting this believe it or not <laughs> i was like i was I, i was i was i was preparing like a a, 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 a a, 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 a nice chat and then uh, now i'm i'm seeing that it, it, we are talking about uh, things is important for all of us so we are here no we are talking about you. this my friend so jamie by the way jamie t did this video for me i just had to give and that's jamie right there on the right by the way but jamie mm -hmm. uh, trusheim of uh, ronin creative uh had did this video for me he's done a few other videos for us uh mm -hmm. really fantastic guy has done absolutely stellar work for us, and I can't thank him enough for helping us to do such cool media. Yeah, but that is the important thing. That is Chris. Yes, do. it's Chris, exactly. Yeah, that's Chris. Chris is a fantastic guy. He was here about he? uh, three weeks ago. And he's, he's very Brian Lindy, wearing Brian Lindy's one-stop board shop t-shirt there too. Pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. That is a very nice yeah, thing. Nice. Super fun. So yeah, these things are just awesome. You know, I mean, it's it's just great to be able to make a giant ball of fire whenever you go to stop the one wheel. Super <laughs> fun. So useless, so silly, completely unnecessary, no utility whatsoever. Very fun. But it's fun. It's fun. Very. And uh, is available now in your shop. Yep, um, I've got a new batch coming up here in a day or two. They're sold out right. They're almost always sold out because I have to hand make them. I make them all right here. Oh, you make it. Um, you make it yourself. I make, so I make them myself, and I actually do final assembly here at the house or at the shop. Um, yeah, I actually okay. I make them. So these are these are a handmade item by me. So yeah, and uh, the other the the other two protections. What you make? I see the other two protections. So because good. I'm, I'm glad that Yelk was because, asking. That. They, they should last longer. Um, I'm increasing the technology for the glue. Uh, one second, I'll, I'll show you what we're doing. Here. Yeah. Guys, everything, uh, everyday learning. I'm learning again. I'm like a baby. That I hope that the information is good for all of you. Um, and it's sharing a lot with us. That is very good. And, so, uh, of course, Dragon Tales. Give me a second. Go ahead. Dragon tails, when we get them in, are a. Uh, I have these manufactured, and these mm -hmm. are a nice, wonderful blank. Uh, we've actually had to engineer these quite a bit. Uh, you'll notice they're only welded on one side. It uh, turns mm -hmm. out that you weld them on both sides, uh, and you'll break the board when you catch it on something. If you weld it on one side, you'll break the tail. 
uh, and we want that to happen. So it's an engineered failure point. And underneath there, mm -hmm. you'll see that we've removed some material on each of the rods now mm -hmm. and have a really rough surface. We're using some very special epoxy now. And when we glue it together now, with this being a heavier sandblasting on the tail, uh, and the material removed to allow for a little pocket of glue behind it, as well as the heavier uh, grind on the ferrocerium rods. Uh, Yakel, I hope these last a lot longer. We're now seeing that most of them go down to about 10% of the rod or less before the release. So uh, we're actually seeing some that seem to be using almost all of the rod before release now. So that's good. Okay, that is very good. And uh, uh, the other thing I think you don't have is the plates. New do you, uh, are you? I, am, I, I should have some more in again soon. Um, unfortunately, with COVID, just keeping mm -hmm. up with demand and continuing with manufacturing is always a challenge. Um, it's a big challenge. You know, right it's, it's, uh, we are always working to make more. And in fact, I've got many more on order right now. Uh, they should have been delivered last Friday. Uh, that was only a month late. So they're still not here. And they're not answering my phone calls right now, so we'll see. Oh, that's that is not very good. It's all right. <laughs> it's not. It's all right. We'll get it. We'll get it. They're just they're very embarrassed that they don't have it done for some reason. That they don't even want to give me yeah. any more excuses. So I know that that yeah. when they stop answering my phone calls and they're that embarrassed, I know they're working very hard to meet my demands. Um, so we're probably in a good place. They should be up soon. <laughs> and the t-shirts you have in three colors. Yes, uh, we have a lot, by the way. So we're really low on shirts right now, um, but uh, the overkill design. So this is the Flamingo, which is super cool. Uh, this is actually, again, another piece designed by Kai Miller. Uh, really, really mm -hmm. cool stuff. But we've actually got a couple of new designs coming. Um, one very soon with some new colors for the overkill, the, you know, the wonderful skull shirt that we sell, uh, which is, that's been the mm -hmm. uh, Miami crew uh, logo for up oh, here, I guess. This fella right here, right? So we sell the T-shirt with this logo on it as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I know and, the logo. Uh, I, so that's I been that's it. that was our original crew logo for the Miami One Wheel Crew, uh, mm -hmm. and of course, then when I started Overkill Inc., it just got adopted as the uh, logo for the company. So that is uh, that is uh, that is stickers. stickers. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, that's so special. that's the over that the parent of Armadillos is Overkill Inc. So the actual company's name is Overkill Incorporated. Because mm -hmm. we do everything sense. Overkill. We, why why do it good <laughs> enough? When we can do it, why do it good enough when we can do it way way better than good enough? And that's what we want. We want the best. The only I just, thing is good I, enough. I, I, Honestly, I mean, yeah. we bought a one wheel for a reason, right? The one wheel. I mean, it's truly the best toy out there i think um you know there's a reason i have a wolf warrior at the time i bought it it was ostensibly the best scooter there was except for maybe mini motors but i wanted to go off road and so i had to get the wolf um you know there's just so many cool options out there uh so i uh yeah i <laughs> i think that if you're gonna have a really cool toy and you're gonna have the best thing for you me it be it an euc be this it you know your favorite point. scooter be it a one wheel whatever it may be why not buy the best protected for you know it's not it's not going to be a whole lot of fun with a flat and so it's worth the money and that's why i put the investment into building this for myself uh because so hey look here? my first yeah. my first bottle cost me five thousand bucks it's a real bargain for everybody else mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, what is this here this this gel? So this is yeah. buddy so this is for tubeless tires especially for the one wheel um, if whenever you're seating a tubeless tire, you increase the pressure too high to seat the beads, you can mm -hmm. distort the tire, uh, which means it will be out of round and it will feel lumpy when you're riding it. It can also be a danger mm -hmm. to you, but for the most part, it's just uncomfortable. This is a lubrication solution that I have made, um, and it is, again, ridiculous. It's far more slick than anything else out there you can buy. Uh, and you only just need just a little bit. You just basically put a little on your finger, rub it around the inside of the tire where it meets on the rim uh, and rub just a little bit on the rim to slick up the rim and you'll seat tires at typically about half the pressure it would take otherwise. Yeah, that's good. That is very good. Very handy product just, to have. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, oh, and you yeah, have for ladies. ladies. Fantastic. We do. We do. We're low on those ones too, but yes, we've got those. But, but, there is not so many companies who think about the ladies and that is very nice for me. 
In fact, yeah. uh, our co- funny enough, our company, uh, three out of four employees are women. So, oh, we, that uh, is very nice. I, I better, I better think about the ladies, or else they're going to beat me up. So, we have to think about it. Uh, I make every Sunday here <coughs> interview with ladies because I think they are very important Perfect. for all, our community. Well, this company My wouldn't friend. exist without the women who help run it. So, yes, that that is the important thing. They take care of them. They are very special for all of us. Uh, and then I, uh, uh, my friend, what now that we are here, now we are talking about your company that I didn't know. Uh, uh, that is very sad. <laughs> I invited a person hey, and I didn't, right. know, didn't know. You're my best friend now, though, because I love yeah. it. I, I think this is great. You know, I love it that people don't know. And you invited me anyway. See, this is why I really appreciate you. You just invited me as a writer. I invited, you invited, I invited as you as a writer. You invited me as your friend, as a writer. This is yes, very wonderful yes. of you. Come on. This is great. Yes, but uh, of course, uh, uh, <laughs> that is not, uh, I think that is wonderful. Do you know why I think it's wonderful? Why is that? Because uh, surprises uh, or... Uh, that is always very good for us uh, to learn. Today I learned something new, and I think that you you share you you share for us so many information, like this plate that you show it uh, uh, is like so big information. When I put it tomorrow out to the media for everybody to know how that work, I think well, thank you. lots of lots of lots of persons are not informed, well, and that is. And it sometimes is you need it to inform the people I why. It. I really it's appreciate the a, opportunity to get it out there. It's great, you know. I, I like think it. I think I think I think that is good for all of us. For uh, you know that one wheel is one of the biggest uh, groups around the world, and yes. if we don't share it, uh, the, what we learn every day. That is not going to be fair with the community. We have to share it. And one thing that you put it out. And then Nelson, why don't you ask him about uh, your one wheel? Oh no, that let leave leave it there. That is uh, another thing. I have a one wheel. I have a one wheel. Uh, I have a one wheel. Uh, uh, the the V one, the V one, and I have a big problem of uh, uh, disconnected all the time. Hmm, that's not good. You mean the Bluetooth? And no, my friend, uh, it's like I'm I'm uh, I'm riding and have one moment to another disconnected. Ooh, bad. And well, so now this, told... this actually this actually leads me into this part of the story. You see behind me over here that big toolbox? <laughs> yeah, I actually I now own the Miami Board Shop as well. Uh, MiamiBoardShop.com, uh, Miami Board Shop Incorporated, and we are Miami's premier one wheel repair center. So if you had that problem here in Miami. I would say, please come over. I will fix it for you, nothing. But I, it's a little far. But uh, yeah, that's. that's I, rough. Am, I, 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 I'm, I'm afraid of the board. I don't use it anymore sure. because uh, uh, I, I, I fall it. Uh, they sometimes sure. it takes one month, works fine, and then one day to the other, you are riding and you are uh, getting trust and disconnected. You know what happens when disconnected. Yes. You fall, baby. That's you why, go for a flight. Very short one. Yeah, hard landing. And that's why I stop it with her. And I, well, I it's very so sad. To be very clear, the one wheel, and I, I don't mean to be insulting to the V1, but I, the damn things are a death trap. I've got one in here right now. They're just, they are death traps, man. This one I've actually named Christine. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Stephen King novels, but Christine was a haunted car that was murderous, tried to kill people. This board is named Christine because it turns itself on and off randomly. And I do mean it'll just be sitting there and turn itself on uh, and has tried to kill multiple riders. So this is now known as Christine. So mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, the V1. In all honesty, the V1 is not necessarily a very good board. Uh, I would strongly no. recommend grabbing a plus or something if you can. Yeah. So much better. So much better. Yeah, but uh, it's like this. My I have this board so many years, my friend, and my I my know. board is the six hundred and twenty-seven. The number. Whoa! Is one of uh, is one of the first ones. 
Well, so if it's just disconnecting like that, man, I'd take it all apart and I would just look at the capacitors. I'd make sure that they're well connected and soldered in well. I'd make sure that the foot pad connector, all the solder joints on it look good. Just put a little flux on it, hit it up, make sure that all of them are really well flowed. Um, there's a lot of vibration on it after all this time, you know? I I get I'm going to get the I speak with the yoke I'm going to buy a XR though I don't want to I don't, I, it's 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 uh, I'm going to put it like museum yeah I'm going to that's what's best for it, I like, hate to say it but yeah. it really is there's such I mean the V1 is such a cool board it really is I love the V1 I had but you know after I after I decided the V1 was a death trap I got rid of my V1 and I'm still of the opinion they're a death trap. <laughs> and believe it, I love my one wheel, and I love to ride my one wheel. But uh, in the last oh. uh, in the last six months, I have I have created so afraid. And before was like perfect board because I have yeah. I have range is not the problem. I right? always yeah, have in my pack. Good board is that a seven? Is that a seven amp hour ego? That's a seven amp. Hour. Yeah, yeah, that is holy the big cow. One. That's a seven amp and, hour. My oh, good lord. And, uh, and uh, uh, I have it everything, my friend. But uh, in the last six months, I I, I lose the, the the trust in the board. That's why I'm going to buy a, another one. The XR is really great. I got to say, mm -hmm. uh, you you. I mean, I'm sure you've ridden one, but you'll feel very spoiled. It's a. It's a I read it. I know. How to, I love to ride it, and I love to go with my friends. But now uh, I have to change it, and I love my one. If you see my 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 V1, you say, oh, that is a, a XR. But it's yeah, not the XR. Uh, it's with a small yeah. mo motor, fi yeah. for 500. It's not so uh, powerful like yours. It's not going to be so fast like yours. Hold on. Wait a second, though. This is something people don't realize about the V1 motor. You see, it was a completely different design. Not only was it lower wattage, but it was actually made for higher RPM. So the actual design of that motor didn't have as much inductance uh, messing with it at higher speeds for whatever reason because of the design. Mm -hmm. That motor was incredible because it was good at low end and at high end. That motor, I've actually seen people ride it at speeds that are mind-blowingly fast. Granted, you're doing a lot of the work because the board really didn't have a whole lot of power. But the mm -hmm. top speed of that particular board was mind-blowing if you actually freewheel it just take it and freewheel it i think it's like 38 mile per hour freewheel speed compared to like 29 on the xr mm -hmm. um it's, it's like 10 miles an hour faster on the v1 uh mm -hmm. with that particular motor design so yes. i i think that in all honesty here's what i want to do now i don't know if you know about the vesc stuff are you familiar with all the vesc no. stuff coming out? Okay, so I'm probably talking out of school a little bit here, but whatever. I can have people <laughs> yell with me later. That's fine. No big deal. Mm -hmm. um, so the projects are in the works to replace all of the FM branded stuff except for the motor with a VES. Mm -hmm. So a variable electronic speed controller uh, as well as some custom batteries, higher voltage, all the way up to maybe, you know, 90. I love you, Sandra. Bye-bye. Like have a Bye, good day. Sandra. So maybe all the way, maybe all the way up to a hundred volt, um, certainly up to you know eighty four volt. Uh, so yeah, one wheel at eighty four volt uh, with a custom VESC controller using the old motor, uh, I think would be excellent. So instead of using the XR motor, I'm thinking that eventually somebody's going to get around to making the VESC punch over onto that V1 motor. And although I know it was only rated for five hundred watts. Most of these motors can take significantly more voltage than they actually were okay. originally weighted for. So I'm guessing that that motor probably won't smoke until eh, 2,000 watts, maybe more. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you, actually, if, you actually took, if you actually took that V1 motor and just punched that baby up with a whole lot of powder out of one of these new VESCs, it's my suspicion that might make one hell of a fast board. Um, so... Mm -hmm. At, but I, 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 Corey, I'm, I'm going to leave it. I, I don't want to. Uh, 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 the less, the less. You don't want to do. You don't want to do 50 miles per hour on your V1. No, no, because I am afraid that that disconnection, uh, disconnection. <laughs> I'm joking. I would be too. Although, in all honesty, the thing is, is the way that it's being built, it it wouldn't be a worry. And I'm not really encouraging you to do this. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't really be a worry because the controller gets eliminated, the battery, the BMS, all of that gets thrown away. You put brand new controller, okay. battery, and BMS. 
So you're okay. just stealing the motor and the rails. Um, yeah, then, then it's not so, about, but you have to have the right person to do that. You understand? You do have to have the right person to do that. That is not, yes. really not one of those. And, and maybe by the way, I send, you, may, walking, may, maybe is, I send you. Hey, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's maybe a bit of a trip, but why not? Um, there's some pretty good guys in Europe that are doing some pretty incredible stuff. I yeah. bet uh, I bet you can find the right person there without all that worry. With that being yeah. said, this is something that does bear mentioning to people that you should tell them, other people should tell them, because we're getting into a realm of electric vehicles that becomes significantly more dangerous to the user. Uh, DC voltage is not the same as alternating current. Uh, with alternating current, you know, you can grab a hold of 110 volt and it's going to tingle a little bit. Maybe it's really not a big deal. Um, 63 volt, 60 volt DC is about that safe limit for dry skin. Uh, at 70 volt DC, uh, 74 volt or 84 volt DC, rather 72, 84, 96 volt DC, any of those ratings, especially as you get to 84, 96 volt. Uh, it becomes truly deadly uh, voltage through this drive. Uh, what's up, Jay? So, yeah, it's, uh, if, if you're working on these things, especially the new higher-end EUCs and scooters and stuff, um, don't do so without rubber gloves, true shielding rubber gloves. Uh, you will kill mm -hmm. yourself. So yeah. don't do it. Um, these are now getting into uh, back in the old days with the one-wheel V1, the Plus, and so the, even the XR, mm -hmm. really. Uh, it was safe to work on them. You could do it as a user. Uh, as we start moving into these higher voltage vehicles, uh, the danger to yourself uh, is significantly higher because of the voltages involved. So, yeah, exactly. And there's so lots of is lots of voltage today. They are changing. I see the Ace uh, 18S. Now it's going to come the uh, 20S. They are exactly. going to to crazy these, voltages. Crazy, and which is great for power. I mean, it's amazing. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big fan, huge fan, really big fan. Yeah, yeah. But but you have it's to watch also it. it's also it's it's one of those things that it it's where it, now is the time on these shows where we need to start talking about this to people because it is getting to a point where people need to know before somebody opens one of these things up and hurts themselves, uh, not understanding the voltages that are involved here. Uh, these are scary, scary voltages. So that's what I say to everybody. Everybody thinks uh, you can do it in your house. You can do it yourself. Uh, doing yourself, uh, uh, we are talking about lots of okay. voltages, and that is one thing I think that the, everybody's uh, losing a little of the control and putting the, uh, the in the hands of lots of young guys who are, want to try it, and they yeah. don't know what they are doing. And that is not so. I always encourage the young guys to, you know, get the experience with your own stuff first. Uh, light your own things on fire and break your own stuff a few times first. And then, uh, you know, you you can go ahead and, uh, you know, do it for other people. But you shouldn't really offer uh, your services to people unless you've done it yourself for yourself multiple times. And yeah, absolutely. I love writing the UC riders. They're fast. They don't keep me waiting around. I'm not <laughs> sure if they the like riding with, I'm not sure if they like riding with me given that I'm on a one wheel, uh, you know, cause I'm only, you know, 22 mile an hour, 23 mile an hour. And uh, I'm like, bye guys. Good to ride with you. <laughs> in so, the beginning, uh, in the beginning, in the beginning, you talk about that, that the, the, the AUC is not something for you. It's not for me. I like, I like the riders. I like the guys. I think they're great. And I think they're super fun to ride with. Um, it's just, it doesn't feel natural to me. That face forward stance is, it is just not natural for me in any way. However, you see me over my shoulder right here, the uh, Wolf Warrior. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if I need to go fast, that'll do the trick. So uh, if I if that, I need to boogie on down the road, that'll, that'll get up and go. That is uh, like, why you put your, this question as uh, more vultures? Uh, that is easy to answer. Young guys, <laughs> crazy guys, they want to... Uh, show they want to say i have it and sometimes they don't know true. what they have in their hands and that's true uh, also well, i mean the, the truth of it is is that more volts is better right in the sense of you have more power potential with that being said as he noted you know you've got things out there that go really fast without that high of a voltage and there's things that matter more than voltage amperage is more important than voltage in a lot of ways right so 
Um, but with that being said, voltage still does matter. The more voltage you have, the more torque you have, and uh, you know, so on and so forth. But yeah, I mean, as he's mentioning here, you know, I love to ride fast, but slow down with other riders. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing for me. That's why I ride the one wheel more than I ride the scooter. I love that scooter. That thing is freaking amazing. I mean, I love my Wolf Warrior. Really cool scooter, mm -hmm. man. But the thing is, is I've only clocked a few hundred miles on it. Um, and owning it, you know, quite a while now. Uh, the thing is, is that it's a great scooter, but it's just not, there's a je ne sais quoi, right? To riding the one wheel, I'm sure I butchered that, please don't murder me. But with that being said, uh, you know, there's just something special, something truly unique about the experience of riding the one wheel. You know, you're, you're out there, you're free. It's, you know, you're, the word floating obviously has become used so predominantly to describe it. Um, I, I've, you know, heard it described as low level flight, uh, ground level flight that is, and I think that's great. Right. So, um, you know, the, the thing is, is you just, you feel free you at some point, whenever you've ridden enough, even on, on the scooter, there's no amount of riding that scooter that I'm not completely aware I'm riding a scooter. I'm riding a scooter. Mm -hmm. My hands are up here. I'm controlling this thing. I'm doing the braking. I'm, I'm riding a scooter. Whenever I'm on a one wheel, I'm not riding one wheel. I'm just going. The thing is, is, your brain connects with the board in such a way that there's no longer a human interface device in between you. You are simply interfaced with the board directly. Um, you know, with the scooter, you have the brake handle, you have all of this stuff. And I imagine it's got to be the same for the EC guys, exactly. You know, it's just a different stance, but it's the same for them as well. Hands free. You're really in tune with it. You're really one with the device. Uh, that is important, and it makes it a completely different experience from you know, obviously riding something like a scooter or a motorcycle or driving a car or any of these other things that are out there, even the e-skate. Look, e-skates are really cool, but having that remote controller in your hand ruins the whole experience for me. I think they're great, but they're not. You know, if, they, if that wasn't for that controller, I'd love to have one of these big old mountain boards. Those things look so much fun. Like, they'd be so rippy. But the thing is, is I get the controller in my hand. I'm like, okay, I'm done with this. So, you know, for me, um, I mean, I could see myself eventually getting onto an EUC if I, like, really need the power and decide that I'm just going to go ahead and get comfy with the stance and to hell with it all, let's send it. Um, Richard Barnes down here, great guy. Uh, he uh, he keeps encouraging me to, you know, go send it with him. So maybe someday, maybe someday. I still remain incredibly uncomfortable about the entire stance and everything else. But, you know, the thing about these hands-free devices like the one wheel and the EUCs, or that you get on it, you connect with it in such a way that you're no longer riding something. You're simply moving through the city or the woods or the countryside or wherever it is you may be. For me, obviously, it's the city of Miami. But you're moving through the city in such a way that you're not even thinking about the fact that you're moving through the city. In fact, it's it's mm -hmm. you're just you know you're just flowing. It's complete flow. You know, you're not operating a device. You're not moving through the city. You're just flowing through it like water. And mm -hmm. that is where the magic of the one wheel comes in for me. Um, it just becomes this really flow state, you know, moment where you're riding and going wherever you want to go. And there's no reason to worry about, you know, uh, you know, any of those worries. So pucks in the gloves remote feels about the same as that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I guess maybe that makes sense. You know, I, uh, I suppose that my, I, I, I can see where if, you know, you've got it in your hand, you're using it all the time. It's pretty much a direct connection, but you still got to think it's like riding on a scooter. Granted, at some point, I kind of forget about the fact there's a throttle there. And if I want to go faster, it's pretty natural just to, you know, grab more throttle. If I want to slow down, it's pretty natural to grab the brakes. You know, it's not like I have to really process it per se. But at some point, there's just not a natural. Doing this with your hand to slow down or speed up is not a natural movement. There's nothing natural about that with your brain. Mm -hmm. On a one wheel, just simply leaning back to slow down is about the most natural thing you can possibly do. When we walk, we're just literally falling forward. I mean, that's how we walk. We lean forward and we walk. We put our feet out so we don't fall. Mm -hmm. But that's what we're doing is we're leaning and we're falling. Um, it's the same thing with the one wheel except for it's catching you. And I think that's really pretty marvelous. So, I just want to say hello to everybody is here now. There is the new persons coming inside and that is very good. As the tire, uh, I think that is like the favorite uh, tire. Uh, we we so, talk about that, Robert, please. So that's, that's a great question. I've actually got both of them down here. So uh, let me just go ahead and grab the props. Yeah. We had oops, up earlier. Two wait, tires. Wait, are a, second. wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Yep. So two current favorite tires. 
Um, the Flight Fins Whisper, uh, which is this tire right here. Uh, this has been my favorite tire for a very long time. Uh, it is an incredibly good tire. Uh, it's, you know, a little bit thin. Uh, obviously, you're going to need armadillos with it. I think that's become the consensus <laughs> over time that you better not even try this tire without armadillos because you're going to have a bad time with it. Um, but, you know, this has been a really great tire. It has a really nice compound. It's quiet. You know, it provides a really good ride feel. And frankly, I think that it's hard to beat, uh, you know, the ride quality you get out of the Whisper. However, Flight Fins has just released the Nimbus. Uh, this is, as you can see, a tire that is similar in height, uh, but it is, in fact, quite a bit narrower than the uh, Whisper. So what you actually get with this is if you've ever ridden a 5.5 treaded tire, you get that wonderful, you know, carvy, super lean into it, super flow state sort of, you know, you can just really rip around on it and really carve with so low effort, so low input, but you don't get the buzzing of the treads and the range loss from the treads. So um, this right here for me, uh, the Nimbus is probably my new favorite tire, but I haven't had it long enough to say for sure it's my favorite tire yet. So I'm going to still go with Whisper right now, but that may be soon updated to Nimbus. Okay, that is good. I have I have a question. I'm going to make a question because uh, I'm a person. When I when I come to this, I have to ask you now. Now, uh, uh, in the future, are you planning to bring something new to your company? Yeah. Oh, we've always got new toys. new products, new products, new products. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's there's a couple of for the one real world. Where, yeah, we're playing with a couple of really wild things. Um, you know, we, uh, we actually had some really cool suspension rails designed, but frankly, I'm liking what the kill guards guys are doing well enough that I don't really feel like I need to go out there and compete with them on this. Um, frankly, to split the market up and, uh, look, they, I've been a proponent of this for a long time. If you come to market first with something and it's really a truly, you know, breakthrough technology, I'm going to try to support you rather than compete with you. Um, and frankly, as far as I'm concerned, those guys came to market first and I'm all about trying to, you know, just boost them up and watch them go. They've also just come out. I don't know if you noticed the little mini. Have you seen their kill guard suspension yeah. mini? Yeah. Super cool. It right? was Super here. Cool. The guys was the, the guys was here with me. And I I, I, I think that uh, what what I what I think they bring the old one. And now uh, they make the interview, and then one week later they bring the the new one. And I think that was not something. I, I think they have to. When it was another, I, I tell to them, and I think if they was a little more intelligent, they say, okay, leave the interview for three or four weeks later, yeah. then and then we're going to put it. Uh, that was well, so something. This is, I this, think, is, this is just reason for them to come back and visit with you more, though. Of course, I'm. I, I think now, now it's perfect. Before, I was thinking right. it was not so nice because that was very big. I think uh, it was not. Now it's cleaner. It's a clean job. Yeah, no, it looks really good. It really is so yeah. nice. So yeah, speaking of other things though, um, we've been working on a. Um, how do I say? Mm, better built, more. Uh, well suited to purpose uh, enclosure for uh, the entire system. So um, this is something we're trying to. That will be good. Uh, yeah, it's that's actually uh, it's actually a pretty hot shit little thing if we get it to work. So that's pretty neat. Um, we've got that that we've been for you, my, for you, my friend. As 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 a, as a constructor, as you have a company, as a rider, what you think. Uh, not not the saying what you're going to bring in the future. I know that you're going to bring and you don't want to uh, tell us every, everything. Secret is secret and secrets you have to wait. Uh, uh, but what you think will you think as a rider, what you think is need to be changed in a one wheel? For so you, ignoring, ig ignoring, ignoring the uh, questions about, you know, company uh, behind it that may need to change uh, some mm -hmm. of their policies. Uh, so I think that's, uh, you know, been beaten to death at this point. We all wish. There yeah, that is very there. bad. But uh, outside of the change that we all wish for there, I think that really, in all honesty, um, you know, the electronics being more waterproofed, uh, the housings being more waterproofed is actually kind of a big key. Um, I think that we've seen that in the pint to some degree. 
Um, but we still, uh, well, in Miami anyways, uh, people for some reason seem to regularly go swimming in the ocean with their one wheels. Mm -hmm. It's not the best not the plan. Thing. Uh, not a good no. thing. So um, even the pint doesn't deal with saltwater intrusion very well. Uh, so while it will last for a little while, they still will basically die from that. But I think more than that, um, you know, the big, and this is a technology leap, right? More than a leap of what needs to happen to the boards that we currently have in our hands. Uh, it's the, you know, the technology becomes more friendly to wide mass adoption whenever a couple of things are put in place. And I, I really hate to even say this because it's it's not what I want for me at all. Um, but whenever you actually get a board that literally has the nerf setting so strongly put in place, you can't go over speed that's dangerous. And I mean, literally, it will not let you do it somehow. And generally, it's going to have to be pushed back. And people always, you know, well, why can't you just, you know, make it not go faster? The physics don't work like that. Mm -hmm. um, you can make it push back more strongly. And at some point, you can make it just so horrible to ride at speeds higher than the intended speed that you don't want to. The pint did a pretty good job of that, unfortunately. Um, whenever you hit 15 mile an hour, it becomes <laughs> pretty unpleasant to ride. Um, so unfortunately. <laughs> it really does. I mean, the pint's a wonderful machine, but you hit 15 mile an hour, it becomes downright unpleasant to ride the thing. Um, so the, you know, yeah, I, think we're gonna see, I think that we're going to see that with the XR. As much as I don't like to say it, I think we're going to see that. Uh, I think that we're going to see a much more pronounced pushback, probably at 19 miles an hour is my guess, 18, 19 mile an hour. Um, I actually started a change.org petition, I don't know, three years ago, four years ago, uh, whenever they changed the uh, software, the firmware, and they did an update and increased the pushback ridiculously on this one update. So started a change.org petition um, asking for custom pushback behavior where we could actually configure it because I, th I thought it'd be great. You know, I think we should be able to actually have customizable, configurable, uh, you know, pushback. If, if I'm on that board and I want to go, you know, 25 mile an hour and have it give me zero warning, I should be able to do that because that's what I want. Mm -hmm. um, if I want to get on that board and get a very strong warning at 12 miles an hour because I don't want to go over 12 miles an hour, but I still want all the benefits of having a custom shaping or any of that stuff without putting it into Sequoia mode and losing all the great stuff about custom shaping. Um, you know, I think I should be able to do that. Well, Future Motion actually released custom shaping, I think, kind of as a response to maybe that change.org petition. Uh, certainly the timing was right there, one, two. Uh, but it sort of solved the problem. Um, it allowed us to go into a nose down profile and, you know, at least mitigate the worst effects of the pushback. Um, but I think that, you know, if, if we could have anything... Um, that I would like, it would really be more configuration like that. There's a lot of software configuration options on these things that should be available to the user, I think, that they just aren't opening up to us. And I suppose that's for safety reasons as much as anything. Um, but I would I would really like to be able to configure those sort of things. We're right now, we're hacking the hardware, we're doing all kinds of cool things. I mean, we've got so much stuff hacked on these things. We're, I mean, you know, batteries with extreme ranges and, you know, power upgrades and all kinds of new bearings and saw a really cool one of those today made out of nothing but ceramic. And I do mean races and everything. Really cool. So anyway, um, here's the thing. You think at, at the end yeah, of the day, hardware, hardware is being pushed forward big time. We're doing great there. Unfortunately, right now, we're still locked out of the software end of it, and that's where I want to see the improvement. That's what I want. Okay. And uh, you talk about uh, another point that is like uh, batteries. Do you think we need more range? Well, I mean, I don't think your average user does, to be perfectly honest about it. I think the 20 miles for average user is probably fine. Um, in fact, I think that it might make sense to adopt more like a 15 mile range, 14 mile range as a very practicable range for most people um, and try to make the device lighter and smaller, much like the pint. But again, not with the nerfing that the pint had. The pint had too much nerf. Mm -hmm. The pint was too safe. Um, should not have been, if the pint was limited to 19 miles an hour and had just another 30% battery capacity, man, I would have felt mm -hmm. like that was maybe the perfect board. I really would have. Um, it was very carby from the factory. You know, I had a lot of great carve right from the factory. It wasn't that big, stable, fat Vega, which also I think was backwards as could be. Um, your beginner board should have the stable tire on it. Your advanced board should have the more carby tire, but whatever, mm -hmm. I digress. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I think that the Pint is actually a platform that whenever they, 
I assume take and make the big brother to the pint being the XR2 uh, or whatever they're going to call it. I expect that we're going to see a significant uh, movement towards a lot of the things pint like, but we're also hopefully going to see it be kind of in more of an XR regime of performance where maybe we can see that, you know, 18 to 19 mile an hour speed before the pushback kicks in. If they do that, I'm going to be pretty happy with it. I'm still going to bitch about some things here and there, I'm sure, but I think I'll probably be pretty happy with it. Just need more power. I need that, you know, it's need 72 volt, 84 volt. Let's, let's go. And maybe is one thing that you guys can uh, maybe create it too? Oh, absolutely. Because well, I mean, there's there's the VESCs out there, right? So the VESC, the variable mm -hmm. electronic speed controllers, obviously those things, we can build whatever speed of board we want, but it's just, it's not the same as the FM software. Let's face the facts. Um, the magic of the one wheel is in that firmware. And uh, mm -hmm. FM has been smart enough to build a uh, suicide routine into the, uh, you know, chips so that if we try to get the firmware off of them for our own purposes, they blow themselves up. Uh, we've learned that the hard way. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, <for you. laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> I like this. Uh, okay. Uh, let, 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 let's uh, and and for you, for what you think that the sensor is a good thing, or you think there is there is something to improve in this in this sensor? <laughs> um, there's a lot to improve, and uh, yes, if, if certain people would hurry up, looking mm -hmm. at you, uh, it'd be great to see some stuff hit the market. And then who I'm looking at knows that I'm looking at them. Uh, but seriously, there's some really cool stuff out there that we'll see at some point. Um, and uh, I think it's important. I, I, I think I think the the one wheel. I I I I don't know. I'm I don't have nothing we do with them. Uh, 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 I just think they block it. The you guys to create something better for us, and I think that is very sad. Because I think there is lots of good products and lots of good ideas there that maybe can help the community of the one wheels. And uh, sometimes they make the, the, the road very difficult for all of you. And I think that is so bad. I don't have no problem. Like I said, this channel is open and I'm, I'm an open guy. And I think the more companies is out there is going to be better for all of us. You're going to have another company who's going to create, you're going to compete against you, and you're going to try to uh, improve yourself. Absolutely. Who is going to win it? All of us, All right. the riders. Exactly. And, but, you know, and speak, speaking of, I mean, this progress forward, you know, it's, the one wheel is obviously now years old design. Um, I was lucky enough to go ride a prototype uh, Viper, the Nami Viper. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Man, I'll tell you what, that is just, it's its <laughs> nice. Oh, it's nice. The throttle in particular is just so nice. Um, you know, and I mean, that's just that continued evolution of performance from, you know, uh, my original ES4 Segway to you know, the Wolf Warrior to eventually, I'm sure I'll end up with a Viper um, or maybe also a Mini Motors, maybe a Mini Motors and a Viper. I don't know. I'm a big fan of both, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the dual trons are just such sexy machines, right? I mean, they're, they're definitely playboy money level, but they are so cool. Um, you know, so anyways, yeah, I, I'm just, uh, you know, looking at all these new technologies coming out and I go, you know, future motion needs some competition because frankly, they're stagnating. They need, uh, they need. They do. You know, That's, it's, it's competition is the, it's the, it's how they drive forward. And it's why we have scooters out there that are doing 70 miles an hour now. Uh, well, I mean, with the exception of the Rion, I suppose, on uh, the Rion. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's a pretty fast scooter there, but the rest of them, 70 mile an hour is kind of the regime we're in right now. But I mean, that when you compare a 70 mile an hour scooter to a 20 mile an hour board, it's pretty obvious that they're getting left in the dust technology wise. So. Mm -hmm. I think I think my friend I, I speak here a lot I was not uh, I, I'm going to tell to everybody I don't I speak with lots of riders of one wheels here and I speak with lot uh, the guys from uh, uh, I have here uh, another guy who was from land surf and I uh, was at another companies here yeah, and Matt, when Matt, Matt, Uber, right? Matt Uber is a great guy really like Matt Uber. yeah and and uh, I listen uh, what they talk we have to be careful because the 
the one wheel company is making our life very difficult and is not easy and i say why they don't let you guys work it's going to be good for all of us that is so yeah, bad no. I, they, it's not how they feel I, it's not how I, they feel. I feel that I, and, and i, I mean I, you, I guess i appreciate it i appreciate it look there's liability reasons i i'm not here to say that what they're doing is something that i can't understand i just don't have to like it and i don't so no yeah. And we are you are free to speak, my friend. I, I think that is uh, I, I I think that is not not, not good. I think that is not good. I think that is wrong, very wrong. But so okay. but, yeah, I wish I certainly wish they would. But uh, my I my guess is that they'd have less than no interest uh, in such mm -hmm. a thing. So let's I see I haven't, what I haven't, we have reaching, I haven't bothered reaching out because I just want to save both of us the time of me hearing hell no. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have here another question here is like uh, have you ever the fm uh users uh yeah that's what i was use? just saying it's like i don't i don't think that they would ever go with that i cannot imagine no. that they would I you just, can you can not, not in their it. company culture man not in their company culture you can you can forget it they don't listen to i write to them huh? and i write to them and uh till today i don't have no answer uh <laughs> yeah, no surprise there uh you know i wrote to them back in the early days and asked you know hey i'd like to start a board shop this that and the other and boy i'll tell you what they were they had less than no interest to say the least i know so. i know that i know that because now i'm uh, i'm leasing more and more and more and more and uh, that is not so nice to to listen and now today you i have you here and uh I, I know that you now as a, a company that I didn't know, and I see uh, that you have to uh, like fight for uh, something that is going to be better for all of us, and that is not nice. That not is nice. like a bad. Uh, that that uh, that is bad. Uh, but okay, let's leave it, and then this is to be have a nice uh, chat, not uh, going. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll whip that horse. I'll beat that dead horse all day long. I got to stick over in the corner. I used to beat the FM horse. It's all right. Yes. Um, and no, but... I just want, I just want to have fun, and I just want the best for all of us. And I think you are doing a fantastic job. I see today your videos, and I see how you are doing. I didn't know. For me, I I am a guy who write most of the things. I write the AUC, I write the one wheel, I write the skateboards, and now I have for my wife. I buy the seventy three because my wife wants sometimes to go with me, and uh, I and I I have a a problem, and now I can buy this and I can uh, I solve my problems with that, and that is the uh, the important thing always uh, learning and always seeing new things and today i invite a friend and this friend is as a company and i was like i didn't know and that is very sad <laughs> well, as, like i said i think it's i think it's great so i just i like that we came on here totally not even planning to do this and it was still yeah it's great so i'm happy well, that is crazy it. hey, hey, it's sorry. been, such a, it's been such a nice conversation too you know mm, truly yeah, it's been yeah, a yeah, great friend. visit mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want I just want to uh, I just want to make some questions for you as a rider. I know that you have a, a company. You have to. We are more than two hours here now, but I want to make some uh, small questions uh, that as a rider that is very important for everybody out there to know how Curry works. Tell me, bindings. Do you like it? Hate it? Don't use it. So, you know, whenever it comes to uh, snowboarding, I, you know, I, I, I do like bindings on a snowboard. Um, and, you know, I, uh, well, the thing is, is if I had the knees left to do that stuff, I probably love them. Um, for me, I no anymore, them. because I just, my, my legs just can't do it anymore. I really love watching the guys take them and go rip around with them. And man, I want to take that board and do that with it. But unfortunately... You know, these 40-year-old knees, they're, uh, I want to get another 30 years of use out of them before they're totally <laughs> garbage. And uh, I don't think that jumping around with a 30-pound weight attached to my legs is going to help that. So I, uh, while, I, I think they're, I, while I think they're extremely cool, uh, unfortunately, uh, I have just, again, in the last year, tried them and decided that as much as I really want to do it, I just, my knees are not going to allow it. So not for me. I have my... I buy mine. I use it one time. I have it there. They are new. I never use it again. 
I don't like <laughs> I, I think that they're one. I really, I mean, some of the things these guys are doing with these boards with the flight fins on, especially yeah. trail riding off road and stuff. I mean, it's incredible. You know, they'll come up and they'll be able to log across the trail and they'll just whoop, hop over the log. <laughs> like, okay, fine. I'm picking up my board and walking. Okay, cool. That's fine. I'll do it. Whatever. <laughs> you know. Um, but <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's uh, basically whenever it comes to jerking a 30 board, 30 pound board up into the air. Uh, I'm just getting too old and too fat to do it reliably anymore. So <laughs> I think I think that flight fins are probably uh, definitely something that I need to either. Now, here be clear: if if we can get a board, and I'm, we've looked at this by the way, using like lithium i uh, lithium polymer mm -hmm. packs and a bunch of other tricks. If we can get a board down to like that 14 pound level, yeah. then I think I actually then I actually think I want to get another set of fins. Mm -hmm bolt it on and go send it because a 15 pound board i'm going to do some really stupid stuff with it and again that's another one of those little fun experiment things we're doing we're playing mm -hmm. around with you know lightweight batteries of course cb released the stunt pack i'm looking at even lighter weight stuff looking at ways to reduce rail weights looking at ways to shave pounds off the hub um you know all kinds of fun stuff and of course the tampa what guys you, are, you know playing with rewiring the motors rewiring <laughs> this head, rewinding it for faster speeds and you know they're going out there and you know dealing with crazy bearings to you know get higher speeds and they're they're doing some really crazy cool stuff. So uh, we are talking about what do you think was will be the perfect weight for one, one one wheel. I mean, the perfect weight for me would be like honestly like a ten pound weight. I don't. I mean, I got to make some concessions to like reality here, but I think like a you know ten pound, twelve pound weight would be negligible. It just wouldn't feel like that much. Um, and it would ride so beautifully, right? Okay, for the, this nose and this this nose dive, we see in the beginning a video for you testing very before. Do you like to use these wheels? Do you think that is very good sure. for the, or is um, something? So be be very clear. Do I think they'll save you from every nose dive? Absolutely mm -hmm. not. No, I think that's, that's the wrong reason that, to happen. That's um, the question I would like put it like yeah, no, that. I mean, look, yeah. they help. They help. They reduce the friction, um, you know, so that that instant deceleration whenever you go nosedive is not the problem. Unfortunately, a lot of people, whenever they nosedive, are just so horribly off balance from the pitch difference, the tilt difference, that unless they're really well centered and fairly experienced, you know, at changing that, you know, angle quickly, they're probably just going to pitch off the board like a little teacup anyways and get broken. Um, mm -hmm. it just, you know, it's, it's, it, man, it happens so fast. I remember my first few nose dives so fast, right? You're just mm -hmm. like, what happened? What was that? What, why am I on the ground mm -hmm. and why is everything bleeding? This is not fun. Um, yeah. it, but you know, at the end of the day, you figure out it was almost always your fault and you learn mm -hmm. what not to do. And you know, at some point you ride enough, it gets to a point where you're not, not commonly hurting yourself anyway. Um, still happens. Yeah, that's but, uh, and then the other question, my friend, uh, what uh, what uh, grip tape do you use in your boards and you s recommend for the guys out there? Sure. sure. So let's be clear. I'm just going to go back to the fangs real quick question. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to say about these things is fang dragging is super fun, though. <laughs> I really love mm -hmm. just slamming the nose of the board, especially when you're coming up. Where it's really practical probably for me is when you're coming up over top of a curb or something like that where you get a little bit of a lag and the nose slaps down. That wonderful lack of friction just allows the board to pull right back up. Man, that's nice. That's what I like about fangs, and that's why I run fangs because yeah. they allow me to pull through those little situations where I just have a lack of power. There's, you know, I don't end up running off the board. It's it's cool. So mostly for me, fangs are a low speed nose dive protection device more than a high speed nose dive protection device, but they really do work for that. Um, mm -hmm. So as far as grip tape goes, that's a hard question. Um, so you know, badger grip for you, my friend. So I run, I've got multiple boards, right? So I run a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. Um, but if you if I'm running a you know a tail that's got a custom cut to it or something, you know, that's just different shaped, whatever, uh, I usually run badger grip because you've got all the wonderful custom cuts on it. Really good grip, super, really good, vicious, like really sticky. But unlike vicious, it won't actually peel off uh, because vicious it sheds real bad. I don't know if you've ever used vicious tape, which is mm -hmm. like the most aggressive, but whenever you move your feet around, it loses the grit, which is no good. Um, but the other tape that I'm a huge fan of is TFL tape, uh, the Float Life tape from Jeff McCoskey, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that stuff, it was really kind of the original uh, replacement tape, and it is just absolutely fantastic tape. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, it's really, really good stuff. So um, either I say go to Badger Wheel and get tape there while you're gadging your Badger kit to waterproof your board, uh, badgerwheel.com. Um, and by the mm-hmm. way, waterproof your board, waterproof your board, waterproof your board. Go there, buy it. It's more important than tire sealant, maybe, if you're going to get the board wet. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I tend to think tire sealant is pretty important, but I also think getting your board to be waterproof is also really, really important. So, yeah. um, you know, that's a great place to grab your grip tape and the waterproofing kit at the same time. Uh, but if you're going to go over to the float life and grab, you know, some of the sliding plates, uh, their, you know, their new bang bumpers, uh, some of their really cool homebrew rails, which I've got to set in the back over there on that thing in green, going to do a mm-hmm. really cool green and gold custom build. Can't wait to get that done. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, if you're going to go over to the float life and grab, you know, something from there, uh, you might as well throw on some of the TFL grip tape as well, because it is solid tape. Uh, that's why I come, uh, I come to one question. I have question, another question. Uh, do you are a person who like to ride with a fender? And uh, you, you can see behind me, I'm a pretty big two, rider. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I actually have, I have, have two four there. wheels. I have four wheels. Yeah. Uh, three of them, mm-hmm. three of them don't have a fender. One of them does. Uh, with that being said, it's going to be two and one, two eventually. Um, really, probably three and two because the pint behind me is my little rainbow pint marine. Um, I took that pint and made it so waterproof. It's absolutely insane. Like mm-hmm. the inside of the connectors and the outside of the connectors, everything has silicone. Um, mm. This thing should be waterproof to like 10 feet. It's pretty stupid. Every connector <laughs> has, you know, dielectric grease on it. Uh, we've waterproofed the motor, got seals on the motor, everything else. Um, so it, it should be pretty good for, you know, waterproofing on that guy. That one you need a fender because, you know, unless you want water all over you and you're riding in the rain, you need the fender on that. Although I like the way it looks so much better without the fender. Uh, the one behind me that you see the fender on, that's my old craft and ride fender with my, it's the carbon fiber craft and ride with my patch on it. It's been on forever. Mm-hmm. Really a big fan of it. Um, you know, it's, it's been a damn good fender for a lot of years and very, very tough. Uh, starting to get a little cracked up, a little beat up, but still works pretty well. Uh, actually, that one's held on by the SIN system that was designed by Lucas Pawlowski. Uh, mm-hmm. Dustin Foster and him both came out with different styles of systems at the same time. Uh, this is the one that has kind of just straight nuts on it instead of the 3D plastic printed ones. Mm-hmm. I preferred this one, plus it was a local guy, so pretty cool. Um, then the okay. Landsurf Contour Fender. So you had Matt Hoover on from Landsurf. Uh, my favorite fender these days is the Land Surf Contour fender. Um, that fender is so good looking, so 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 good looking. Um, it follows the lines of I, most people probably don't even remember John Rambo, uh, but John mm-hmm. Rambo was a part of the community way back in the early days. Still makes fenders. You can still find them online. They're hand laid, very very thin, very fine custom carbon fiber fenders. Very pretty. Um, kind of a lead time on them. So if you need it now, definitely not the way to go. But you can find uh, mm-hmm. John Rambo, get one of his fenders. But the Lancer fender, the nice thing about the John Rambo fender was it fit the tire so tightly. It was really mm-hmm. just like a glove. And the same thing is true of the Lancer contour fender. Uh, it fits like a glove. It is just so tight to the tire. Really, really good looking fender and extremely sturdy. Like, I think it's actually tougher than the carbon fiber fender by a pretty good measure. So um that's that's been my new favorite fender now yeah i'm going to show just uh, for uh, the guys who don't know the yeah, fender it's, it's a really cool fender yeah that is uh that oh is... that's john rambo yep you can tell yeah. by the little pads that come out and you can mm-hmm. you pick these things up and it's really pretty marvelous talking about lightweight boards these things are the fender might weigh a half pound i mean they're just so yeah. lightweight it's incredible all handmade by John. All, all the, all the, all the men, uh, I see was one guy from uh, was one guy from uh, Austria who who have it, and he yep. said that is uh, amazing. But so now pull up, so now pull up land surfcom and check out the contour fender though. Exact yeah. same sort of nice, really nice tight lines of the one wheel looks so pretty, so pretty. Um, you know, I think that that for me is obviously from, you know, it's you land at surf.com. Land, L A N D dash S U R F dot com. So, the same people who make the fangs, uh, he's also making some really cool fang bumpers. If you haven't seen this now, have you seen the fang bumper? Mm hmm. 
No, no, the way really cool. uh, Lent. Sorry, Land L A N D L A N D S U R. Yeah, Land. Land and Surf. This guy right here. Oh, you, do you, oh, Lend and Surf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's so cool. have you yeah, seen that? Have, I... have you seen the new bumper? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's awesome. Uh, I received so, yeah, it yesterday. So, yeah, that's uh, the contour fender from them. What uh, color? What color I, got, do you have? I got the red wheels and the black bumper, I think. I have the, the green. I hope, that's what, I hope that's what Matt sent me. Yeah. So I've got. Ooh, fancy. Check that out, buddy. I Isn't have. That nice? uh, I have. Uh, I think I have to mount it. Yeah, mine. I have to. Mine is with the green ones. Beautiful. Oh, those are going to look so hot on there. Oh, it's going to look good. <laughs> so, yeah, anyways, the, uh, the contour fender from him. Um, it's really just, it's an incredibly good looking fender, uh, that I think is pretty much the best thing on the market now for fenders. So whenever it comes to fender, I'm all about that one now. Yeah. I'm too. I'm, uh, I, I, I contact him, uh, Matt and I say, Matt, I want one. And he said, uh, uh, I'm going to put in two days out and I say, send me one. And he sent me and yesterday was there and tomorrow I'm Incredible. going to make a small video. So small video awesome. for him. I think he well, deserves really it. Cool. He create. And he's Matt, a fantastic Matt is, person. Matt is a, well, not only is he a fan. So I don't know if you know this, but he helped me to design the plates that I sell as well. So uh, Matt helped me to finalize the design on those and actually get it into the CAD program and everything else. So mm -hmm. uh, he took our final prototypes and helped us to, you know, make it a properly machinable file that we could get mass produced and. Uh, continue to serve the needs of the community with. So Matt Hoover is, in my opinion, uh, the finest designer in this world. Yeah, and he's having a, a, a he has yeah he, he having lots of problem with two companies, not with one, but but with two. Right. And I think yeah. that is very sad. It's a uh, it's not cool, you know. It's a uh, it's a real. Is what it is. I know. I I speak sometimes with Matt and. Uh, and uh, I don't think that is very nice. I wish we could all just get along and play nice with each other. That's all I want. I uh, yeah. yeah. I think I think he has so yeah. much products, and he's always uh, he's, he's the same. Don't need to talk about it. I hope that Matt uh, he, he just uh, he, he creates so much st stuff for us, and uh, uh, sometimes he make free for all of us. And isn't it incredible? You know, such a good yeah. guy, yeah. such a good guy. And yeah, he gives out files. It? Yeah, he's he's made multiple STL files freely available for people just to press yeah. on their own. They want the bone hand yes. and so on. Really cool. Really, really. Yeah, cool. That's that's a, that is a community guy. I say to him, and uh, when he came, when he was here in my, he was one of the first guests in my life. And uh, I was I was talking about him with him because I was I think I was with one hundred uh, persons uh, subscribing my channel, and the guy tell me of course I'm going to come and I say I just have one hundred subscribers and he said no problem I'm going to come. And that was uh, that was fantastic to listen to. Yeah, on, Matt's, uh, Matt's a great guy. I mean he's just such a good guy. So you know, he, and you, uh, my friend, I I speak with you in private, and I say, uh, thank you for coming because uh, I'm a small channel, and you came here, and uh, uh, sometimes it's not so nice to listen to other guys uh, saying, okay, I just come with this because you are a small channel, I'm not going to come, and you guys, you came all of you and uh, support because that is for the community. And right. today was another day of a, of a big surprise for me, uh, uh, and. Uh, and I have another company that I know a little more. I was like, it's like a baby who, who, who is learning. And I hope that is going to help a lot, a lot, the guys That's out cool. there. And tomorrow I'm going to show to the, everyone. My friend, we are going to close to two hours and, and, and help. But I'm going to, but before you're going to go, I want to show something to everybody. Let me see. I want to show you because you sent me something and I want you to. That's a good crew right there. I'll tell you what. 
that is such a good crew, good humans. And that's, that is, I want to think, you know, I, the, the one wheel is awesome, but it's not the one wheel that makes it so special. It's all of those people, um, you know, good friends, good times, great times exploring the city on the board. And, you know, frankly, um, if, if I didn't have this board, I wouldn't have had those experiences. So I'm so grateful for, you know, having had the opportunity to go do this. It is just so awesome. And that's what I look like on a good day. <laughs> oh, dude, that's Float Life Fest too. Look at that. That is Float Life Fest too. You got Ryan Hurovitz. Uh, man, oh, that's just, boy, and you've got the two Polacks over there on the left. You got Mariusz from uh, Poland uh, and uh, Lucas. Uh, now, uh, Mario there lives in Chicago. Lucas is down here in Miami with me. And then you've got Olivia Oblivia there uh, next to me, who Olivia, uh, whenever she, this this very evening, in fact, I think it was, maybe it was the next day, uh, won the rock, paper, scissors for a one wheel XR uh, and got a free board and she gifted it to her father so he could join her and ride. And you love it. And he's, he's, and he's still riding to this day. Russell Kramer is her father. Oh, that's, uh, and he's that's uh, an nice. important part of the community and a uh, great rider. And uh, yeah, in fact, the one wheel is best. I understand it helped those two uh, come closer as a family. So I think that that is uh, really special and really fabulous. And uh, you, you have, you have to do something. My friend is like, uh, you have to say to her, she has to come here and, uh, well, tell her. Uh, yeah, and uh, we are always uh, receiving to end of June. We are complete with the ladies to come, but Excellent. I'm very pleased to have her, all the ladies here. If you if you have uh, contact, I give the contact, and I write I write to her, and I'm going to bring it for sure. And here, Perfect. nice picture, my friend. Thank you. Yes, I have the uh, the Back to the Future glasses on. They're not really glasses. It's actually just a chunk of aluminum <laughs> kept to look like glasses, but. <laughs> little known fact that movie prop in the movie was nothing but solid aluminum he couldn't see a damn thing through <laughs> <laughs> but you have here lots of blues and lots of uh, uh v ones huh yes this was uh this is back in the day so this was before the uh, xr existed so uh this was back at our one of our group rides and i just took over the bar and threw all the one wheels up there and went back behind like i was the bartender and then he kicked me out so it worked out fine <laughs> you see this one that is here me and lucas that's doing a tire change there good times that, that is very good my friend that is the good thing in photo in, in pictures seeing the time and seeing yep. good friends yep exactly that was jekyll island headed uh jekyll island georgia headed to float mm -hmm. life fest three that is lucas and brent bearing house mm-hmm I think that is fantastic. Do not cross. Oh, Got to love that, right? Got Jason it's Miller there, perfect. Chris Richardson, Paul Steppleworth, uh, and a couple of Groms I'm not identifying immediately. <laughs> that is the two, two young guys who are, who are starting this. That is a fantastic thing. And you uh, working here and changing everything. And that yeah, was me, the, the, me, that attempting, was me attempting to actually tighten a bolt on a pipe that should have never been loose in the first place, but whatever. It's from Chris, the board, the Ferrari board. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Chris, uh, Chris beats on things really well and breaks things in unusual ways that I have to <laughs> fix that I would never have to fix on anybody else's board. It's impressive what that gentleman does to boards. He is, he is the original OG board killer. And uh, of course, guys, if you, I'm going to leave the link from Chris. If you have the chance, go to his channel. If you are a new rider of one wheel, Chris has lots Super. of information for you to know how to begin, for you awesome. to know how to do tricks and everything. The information is everything in his channel. Is a, a guy who explain it everything perfectly to you. I'm going to leave the link there, and you're going to blow your mind with so much information just go he's there subscribe guy. give a like and he's a fantastic guy a fantastic person and there is an interview here with him you can see how amazing person he is and i'm blessed to have so much people here who, who, who make this channel uh look like a big one we are small we are 700 uh, persons but this is 700 is the best ones 
Uh, well, I think I think that is soon to change. I, I believe that this quality channel will be doing very well. Thank you for providing the opportunity to come in and chat. It was very, very, very fun. Uh, don't, don't worry, my friend. That was a big pleasure to have you here. You are a fantastic person. And today I learned so much from you. And I, I'm going to put this information tomorrow out. I think it's going, you're going to help a lots of persons who don't have so. no information like me. I was... I was on inform and today you bring me so good thanks that's why you see york was a great to see you guys tonight yes york thank you very much good york you, is man. creating york is creating a demo in germany because if you don't know in germany is illegal to ride one wheel mm -hmm. uh the fines are very big if they catch you, the police, they're going to take your board. You're never going to see it again. And the fines is very big. That's why we are doing demos and demonstrations to be legal here. That's why I'm going to come to one of the last questions. What do you think uh, you in, in USA, you are free to ride. You don't have no problems to ride. What do you think with the new generation coming with the A bikes, with the A scooters, uh, these young guys who are in skateboards uh, going very fast on the streets. I listened for other riders who was here. Do you think can happen someday you're going to lose your freedom to ride there? It's inevitable um it's been the wild west for years now um it's been a lot of fun while it's lasted uh but i don't i don't expect it to last forever uh you know the the entire lack of laws and uh the the negative space in which we exist which is you know just do whatever you want to do as long as you're not doing something that's clearly out of line uh that's not going to continue for much longer I expect in the it's next five tough. years or less, we're going to see pretty heavy regulations, laws, and rules put in place. Um, I suppose that's probably best for everybody in the end. Uh, but with that being said, uh, I'd certainly like to see places like Germany that are being draconian and very silly about this uh, get with the times and you know update their laws to be more friendly. Uh, and perhaps you know the United States, maybe us cowboys could do better with a few laws i'm a fan of none but i get i get the idea so i think i think i think i i, I don't want to i i want to have the freedom from you guys and yes. uh, i love i but i don't want to i don't want the freedom uh, to destroy the freedom from the others i think respecting the others is very important and uh, sometimes we are losing that and i i know i'm close to now i have now five months doing the interviews i'm going to i think you are uh, the 80 80 uh, 98 interview uh because i do in germany i do the ladies and uh, you I'm are awesome. yeah you are i don't want to lie my friend you are today the 65 in english and i have 20 in german and i have uh, ladies uh and i have no then i and i have the ladies uh, 15 15 interviews Fantastic. yeah that then is today is the 100th i'm the 100th i'm really the 100th uh, or you are the 99 or you are the 100th interview awesome. i'm doing here yeah, <laughs> and five months is a well, lot. I'm doing. So you picked you picked a special. You know, uh, you didn't even expect it to be anything big, and it was. You know, so look, it, it all worked out perfectly. Do you know why why I start this, Kuri? Uh, that just to end, I always say to this: I started because nobody was speaking about the riders, speaking about us, speaking sure. with us, uh, listen to stories. your voice. Yeah, listen to your voice. Listen to this here. That is yep. the important to this. Yes, I this, agree. This is, thank you. That that it's is nice, for me nice the important. I watch, I watch and I get to you know get to know a greater depth about the writers that, of course, I know them. I and most everybody who's been on, I at least know to some degree. Um, mm -hmm. But to get to truly know them at a greater depth, it's wonderful. Um, so keep doing this. Thank you very much. Keep doing and it. I, think I look forward to, I look forward to, to seeing you. the thousandth episode. Can I can I come back for the one thousandth episode? Of course, my friend. I hope All that. Right. I hope. All right, good. I just I I just do this. I just do this for. I started. I think. Oh, uh, I went. To, going to because we are close to three hour, three hours. Yeah, and you have to go to my friend. But I'm just going to be fast. When I start this, I think in the first day I say I'm going to send some message for the guys and maybe. 
three or two persons are going to say yes. And the message I send it, everybody say yes. And I say, oh, I was waiting to make one day in a week. And then I change it to say, too many people say yes. I have to make two or three days. And then right. I start three or three days and I say, okay, but there is ladies there. I have to make a day for the ladies. Ladies then I change it. And I put, put in another day for the ladies. And uh, I live in Germany. I have to make one day in German. Then I'm doing five times now in a week, my friend. <laughs> oh, that's like amazing. This. In oh, a moment, wow. uh, I, I, in, a, in a moment, I can do it, my friend, because uh, uh, as a cook, everything is closed here because of the COVID. Uh, later, I hope that there is another uh, YouTube channels. Uh, there are YouTube guys who, who want to do it. You don't have to expend so much money. Maybe, maybe if nothing else, you can do it once a month or twice a month, you know? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue to make it one or two times in a week. I'm going to continue, oh, wow. for Good. sure. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to stop because I, I create so much friends like you today. And uh, that is the important thing. And I love it. I, I love so much this. And I'm not going to stop it. And uh, uh, that is the important thing. My friend, like always, I'm going to make two questions. And you can answer in this time of all, all this time, one bad moment that you have. Ah, oh, bad moment. Um, yeah, that's hard, I guess. Uh, well, you had to ask right, one hard question. Okay, like let's think. Oh, hell, those aren't bad. Those are just a little bit of pain. It's okay. It wakes you up and <laughs> resets it. Um, no, I mean like bad moments, bad moments, bad moments. Uh, you know, I guess, I suppose probably seeing friends hurt and having to, you know, help them, you know, get to the hospital with a broken collarbone. I suppose that's probably, that's probably about as bad as it gets. Um, I don't mind if it's me. I don't mind wrecking at all. That's just a reset. But uh, I certainly don't like seeing my friends hurt. So that's why I always prefer to really wear helmets and, uh, you know, as much personal protection gear as they're willing to tolerate. So then before I ask you the last one, uh, you talk about one thing. I just want to say what safeties do you use, protection do you use? I, I'm a helmet, helmet and wrist protectors guy. Um, I, I really should probably start wearing elbow protectors because I've broken both of my elbows. <laughs> Sorry, so, um, but uh, yeah, I should, I, should probably, I should probably I should probably start wearing elbow pads, but I'm just still resisting because I just can't <laughs> do it. But anyway, yeah, um, helmet and wrist grinders for sure. I need my hands to work and I need my head to work. Um, everything else is kind of optional. So, and then tell me, please, that's the the the, the last one. Tell me three. I think you have a lot about three of the. The best moments do you have? Oh man, three of the best moments. Wow, that's hard. But you know, the float life uh, uh, fest. Just, just let's just say float life fest as a single moment because that is just it's it's a huge thing, right? But float life fest. Um, obviously, I don't know when to describe the hit and run as a good moment because it certainly wasn't. So we're going to leave that out of here. Most people would expect me to put that, but that wasn't exactly <laughs> what I'd call a good moment. Um, I think that probably one of the most magical moments is just it's not a specific moment. It's that moment that happens when you're riding through a beautiful place. You've got a little bit of music coming through your speakers and everything just clicks into that perfect moment. That is something that, and it happens, it's happened many times, but that every moment, that moment happens, it is the very best again. And I finally, in this one, it's going to take us back to Float Life Fest, but it was a really good night. Uh, I have night vision I like some really high-end military night vision mm -hmm. guns. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we all actually were taking them. Uh, even Jack Mudd from uh, Future Motion got in on this that night. Uh, and uh, we were taking and bolting on the night vision and going for trail laps uh, wearing night vision at night. It was pretty awesome. So, Yeah. And uh, 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 my friend, uh, I just want to ask you something very quick. You are a person in your one wheel. You cannot go with the music. Oh, I, I I like it both ways. See, I like to hear the board. I like to hear the nature. I like to hear my friends. I like to hear everything around me. And I also love to listen to some good music, you know, just pumping out some nice Beatles or gosh, there's so many good choices. Out there. I even like electro, you know, good techno, heavy grind, just depending upon the kind of ride that I want to get in. Um, but yeah, for me, like just cranking up some nice Beatles and just going out there and just really, you know, mellowing, it is solid. Yeah. It's like the perfect mix. mix. Absolutely. 
It, it, Board yeah, and the, music. The, Beatles, the Beatles and the One Wheel, I think, were made for each other, but that's just my opinion. So then uh, I want to say to all of you guys, thank you for coming. It was a very fantastic night. Tomorrow I'm going to make some uh, small clips for all of you to see. Some things I'm going to put in the media. I think there is lots of information. I'm going to leave all the links here from uh, uh, Corey. I'm going to put uh, uh, just for you to see is Facebook, is Instagram, and is YouTube channel. And of course, th today I know there is a website with something is putting out for us. Tomorrow I'm going to put his explanation, uh, why, uh, how to use it, how it is use it, why that is so good product because he explained today with the video very well why, what is the reason to use it and why to use it, and. The other explanation I'm going to put it tomorrow too in a small, uh, small clips, and I put it in uh, YouTube and Facebook for everybody to see it. And of course, I'm going to leave you, my friend, with the last words for all of you. I just want to say, if you have the chance, subscribe to the channel from him, for YouTube. If you want, subscribe to my channel. That is very will be very nice. And like always, the last words is for you. For the guys who are seeing now and for the guys who are going to see the video later, I leave you with the last words and uh, please, my friend. Sure. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to come on and say hi to everybody. Uh, thank you for everybody who watched. Um, it's obviously a pleasure to introduce myself, my company, and some of the cool things we get to do. Uh, so this has been an awesome opportunity to do that. I've really enjoyed myself. Um, I look forward to the growth of this sport and I really do think that we're doing great things. I think that this is the future of transportation. Uh, so go out there, send it hard, ride well, be safe, and I'll see you guys soon. Cheers. Thank you guys. I just want to say, and please don't uh, stop using the action what he did is a very important curry help a, a fantastic person who was a, a, a car crash destroy him and run away and he, he go after him with his one wheel and bring this uh, outlaw or his bad guy to justice and uh, yeah. that is a very important for and guys if you have the chance see the video and give a nice light and like and please condemn these actions if you see something like that do the please. same go there help maybe someday can happen to you never know i hope that never going to happen to you but maybe can happen do the actions like Uri, go after him with safety, of course, and uh, uh, try to help always the next person. Thank you, my friends. Have a good night. Thank you, Curry. And